Coming up next, On the Spot. We've hit the road once again, this week heading south to Electronic Arts Headquarters in Redwood Shores, California. EA is holding a press event with more than 20 games on hand, and we've got live demonstrations of From Russia With Love, Burnout Revenge, Madden NFL 06, SSX On Tour, and Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. Plus, we'll take a tour of the offices, see what other games are on hand, and more, right here, live and on the spot. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of On The Spot. I'm Ryan McDonald, and we're joining you today, uh, as you couldn't tell, right, uh, on location here at Redwood Shores, uh, which of course is the home of the headquarters of Electronic Arts here in Redwood City, California. Joining me right now is Glenn Schofield. How are you doing, Glenn? All right, you? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I can't tell you how, uh, how excited I am. Uh, we, got, we got started a little bit later than usual, had some stuff to get settled, but it looks like we're rolling now, and uh, we got all kinds of stuff. So let's just jump right into it. You got one of the hottest games here. Why don't you tell the folks at home what you do and what you brought the show off. Well, I'm the executive producer of the game, and uh, what we've got today, we've got um, two levels to show you. I've got a little bit of uh, what we call the hedge maze, which is sort of a more of a, a stealthier level, but there is choice in that, so you can play how you want, but this is one where uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using my pistols, I'm using my hand-to-hand, -hand, and then, uh, then I get into a big raging gun battle a little bit later. This is one that really follows the movie closely. Um, you'll you know, the, the whole game follows the movie closely, but this one is we really pay particular attention to it. And um, in this one, he's got to get through the hedge maze and uh, get to the mansion. And so uh, what we've got is uh, it's, it's our second level in the game. Our first level is just this crazy action-packed level, everything happening, you know, explosions. And then we come into this one, which we settled it down a little bit to try and you know show everybody the kind of variety that we have in the game. Now the, the explosions and the crazy level action that you're talking about—that was actually what you showed at E3. You're talking yes, it about was. before, right? Yep, our London level. Yes. And now you actually, aside from from the the hedge action, the stealth that we're going to see here, you're also going to show us a little car action later on, right? Yeah, we're going to do that. Sweet. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, as we're we're seeing this, what what exactly is is and this is for the folks that don't know, you guys got Sean Connery involved. You want to yep. talk about that a little bit? Sure. I mean, uh, I, that, that's what sealed the deal for us. I mean, we, we've been hearing from the fans and, uh, you know, the team itself has been saying for years, oh, God, it'd be great to do one of these, um, you know, go back and do a retro classic Bond one, right? Um, just never thought it would happen, but when Sean Connery signed on, <laughs> uh, you know, the deal was deal was done, and everyone said, "Go, go make it." <laughs> right on. So, um, yeah. yeah, we got Sean. He's working in the studio with us. It's been great. Sweet. Now, I'm glad you're talking about some of the older movies because a lot of the questions I saw as we were talking about before we came on uh, that was coming in from the audience was basically, "What made you guys choose on this particular movie?" There's a lot of right. a lot of great Bond movies. Why did you guys like this one, and and how close did you guys stick to it? Well, we chose this one because it's got a great story. Um, it's, it, it's a wonderful locations. You're all over Europe. You're behind the Iron Curtain at the time. So you're in Turkey and Istanbul and Russia. And uh, then we go to Venice and in London. So the locations are beautiful for you know great setting. Um, we want to really try and tell a story in this game. I mean, you know, a lot of games will have a, a great gameplay, but this, at the end of it, you don't know the story. So the idea is tell this story. And um, it's got a wonderful villain, and Rosa, and Rosa Klebb is a great villain. You've got Red Grant is a great villain. So everything kind of came together. And then to top it all off, we're you know, talking with Sean Connery. He goes, you know, this is my favorite movie that I ever made. Oh, wow. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that sort of sealed the deal. No doubt. Now, some of the gameplay we're seeing, obviously fans of everything or nothing are going to see some stuff that they, they, they see similar. Right. Can you talk about the gameplay and how it's different and how it's the same? Yeah, so we've got this new focus mode where, where what he's doing right now is uh, he can focus in on a character and you see there's different hit points and um, what that allows me to do is if let's say this guy's got a hand grenade, I can take out his hand grenade and maybe take out a whole bunch of guys. So what I do is I, I'm, I'm thinking more like Bond. I'm waiting until maybe the guy with the hand grenade goes with three guys. Mm -hmm. So I can take them all out at once with one bullet. And then we're going to reward you for that. If you play like Bond, um, we're going to give you, you know, more points, which allows you to upgrade your weapons and gadgets, which is also brand new in, for a Bond game. Oh, wow. So we've got a big scoring reward system. We've got these RPG light systems in, involved. We also have an inventory screen. Mm -hmm. So I can go in there and I can change my costume. Mm -hmm. uh, I upgrade my weapons, things like that. Now, what you're saying, let me just mention sure. here, we don't, this is an alpha build, so we don't have a map on here. We will have the map like 
we have had in other games so that you, you won't get completely lost. Okay. Um, and I guess the thing we should mention for the folks at home, what they're seeing right now is the gameplay from the Xbox version, correct? Yes, correct. And, right. and the other thing that we should say is that uh, on today's show, the EA uh, is, for their Gamers Day today, they are focusing on uh, the current consoles right now. They're going to show those games off. And then at a later date, I'm sure you guys will be more than happy to show off your next gen stuff. But today you're focused yeah. on the on the current generation stuff. Yeah, so absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we've we've uh, we've decided to take uh, and go state of the art with this current generation, meaning that we've we've actually invested in a brand new engine. So I mean, we're taking this generation of games seriously. We put, put all this time and energy into a, a new engine just for this game. So we've taken some of the best pieces from Eon. Uh, everything or nothing or return of the king or one of those games and we brought them into this engine and then built a new renderer around it so that uh you know we can really show off the uh this generation of games now how far along are you guys you had mentioned i think you said this was a what build is it alpha this is about an alpha build yes which means uh we're the game will come out at the end of october uh so we've still got about uh, three months to polish the game so we're, we're this game is in a great place we've already got our, our um 14 single player levels, mm -hmm. which are very big, uh, two or three parts to them. Uh, they're all in production, all at alpha. Uh, there's seven multiplayer and a bunch of other hidden stuff. And so we're at the point now where we're going through and uh, being able to polish. It's, uh, it's a luxury in the game industry to have this kind of time to polish a game. That's what, what we're doing. Right on. You're now, also seeing a new hand-to-hand -hand system in here, too. So when he goes up to, to punch a guy, which let's see if he can do it here, you'll, um, you'll see a, an icon come up. And if he, does, if he hits the icon right away, he does a finishing move like that. Oh, wow. And that uh, also gives you new points and allows you to upgrade quicker. Now, we'll... We'll highlight that system a little bit more so that you know maybe it's in slow mo or there's some special effects around it. But that sounds so there's there's a bunch of new stuff in here. We've it's also got the jet pack in the game. Oh yeah, uh, I, I saw uh, that flying around at E3. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now the uh, the uh, the car level that you guys are going to show that's actually a little bit further. It's, it's not quite as far along as this level that we're looking at right now, right? This one's probably a little bit more polished. The uh, the car level is getting there. I'm I'm I mean. It's good enough for us to be proud enough to show it to you. Fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm looking at this and still, still seeing a lot that we have to do to it. But uh, it's it's already we're, we're doing a lot of focus testing on it. People love it. Uh, the amazing thing is that I'll see one person will come in here and they'll do the whole thing crouching. You know, oh, really? they want to do the whole thing stealthily. One bullet. See another guy come in here and go. Okay, I'm just running, I'm shooting, <laughs> and we love that. I mean, the, the idea of this game is choice. You uh, know? I'm definitely in yeah. the, the second group of people. I might be too, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to get some questions, I think, from our audience here in a sec. Of course, okay. GameSpot Complete members, if you are watching at home, if you, all you got to do is put your info in the page, send us the questions, you'll get it here on the set. And uh, while we're actually going to pull those questions up, and, but I don't want to cut away just yet because you guys got to a structure, right? Can yeah, this is, this? this is uh, one of the uh, guard houses in um, inside the hedge maze. So he's coming to it. What he had to do is get a uh, a key so that he can open up another part to the level. Uh, I mean, this is this is uh, we've got some big levels. We've got checkpoints in it. And uh, the other thing about the game is that um, everything or nothing would have uh, standalone levels. Like, okay, this is a stealth level. This is a driving level. This is a you know whatever. Uh, this engine allows us, we've got it all in one. So in one level, you might be in a boat, and then later on in the level, you're going to jump in a jetpack. Um, you can be in a car in one part of the level, and then, you know, on the back of a turret later. I mean, what, what we've done, we've integrated the whole thing. So the levels just keep throwing stuff at you. Variety, variety, variety. I don't know. Uh, I got a question here from Anders in Denmark. Well, he wants to know, have you added something to the location story? Anything like His question is basically, how close did you guys stay to the storyline of the movie? And sure. you guys have extra stuff in there? Oh, you bet we do. <laughs> um, first of all, it's a, like I said before, it's a great story. So we we're, we're make sure that we are painstakingly telling the story. But then again, we've also got a couple of new levels in there. So we've thrown in, um, some, we've thrown in three brand new levels. And the other thing that we've done is that, let's say, in the movie, you might have one scene in the Russian consulate. Well, we've built the whole Russian consulate. We tell the story in that one room so that you know the story, but then you can go explore the whole thing. So we've done that throughout the game. We kind of call it our uh, director's cut. Excellent. 
Uh, while we're looking at some of these questions, maybe we can get the, uh, the car level loaded up here pretty quick. Sure, okay. And while you guys are down, I'm going to throw this at you. Uh, Adam from Scotland wants to know, will we see any multiplayer features in From Russia with Love? Oh, a good question. Uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about the uh, multiplayer. We have, um, you know, in the last games there was the co-op. Well, in this one, we've got four-player uh, head-to-head deathmatch. Um, and uh, it's something that we've taken extremely seriously. The, we've had a separate team, you know, internal here working with us that has been making the four-player. So it's, um, it's head-to-head. Uh, some guys can jump in a jetpack. We've got all the gadgets that are in the one player. We throw them into the multiplayer. So it's, it's pretty cool to see a guy using a laser watch, another guy's in a jetpack, another guy's in a vehicle. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's just great fun. Now you, you mentioned the co-op in there. That's actually a question that uh, John from uh, Wisconsin wanted to know. He wanted to know, will it have any co-op features? We're, we're not planning on the co-op right now because uh, all the... All the reviews that we had gotten back from last year's were like, hey, they, they call, this co-op is fun, but give us deathmatch, man. <laughs> so that's what, we, we want to give them what we heard. That's awesome. Uh, Bryce Gilbert from Monroe, Washington wants to know, since the film has been out for years, was it easier to make the game since you don't have to worry about spoilers or anything? Uh, was it easier to make the game? It, it's, um, I, I think it, it's still, there's some difficulties to making a game like this, but... Uh, you know, it was, now that we have a great story, you know, that part was easy. You don't have to wait for the script to come in there. But the, uh, the, I think the hard thing that, the hard part about this was telling this story. I mean, you've got to tell a story, still have a lot of gameplay, because it's a complicated story. Um, but it was no, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it had its own challenges. Yeah. But I think we've overcome them all. You know, the funny thing is, like, when I started seeing the stuff coming out for this game, uh, it had been so long since I had seen it, and right. I was like, I, I, I was probably a little kid when I saw it, and then, yep. and then yeah, so I went back out and rented it, and yeah, you're right, it, it is one of the better, I, I forgot how good it was, Yeah, yeah. but um, this is another question we got in from Thomas Martinez in Paris, California, he wants to know, will you include any footage from the movie? Yeah, then not only do we have, it's, it's, there'll be some unlockables here and there, but the whole uh, front end and the, the um, UI screens and the HUD and stuff like that, you'll see clips running throughout. So you'll see it from, I open up, you open up the, uh, the game and there's our front end and that will have clips from the movie right in it. So we're showing whatever we can. Fantastic. Uh, Adam in Kilmarock, Scotland again, will you be able to unlock any stars from previous movies? I guess he's probably asking for the multiplayer, I guess. Right, yes. Multiplayer, we do have some different, uh, some different characters. Now, we've kept it to the Connery era guys. Yeah. So there are, um, they, they have to be, come from the Connery era uh, movies. Um, Can you give us any, any, any insight into some of those? Uh, Without getting you in trouble, of course. Yeah, no, you know, a lot of them are unlockable and hidden, so right. it'd be better off. But one thing I want to say is that there's, some of them are in there, you know, specifically for the Bond fan as well. So not only are there a the couple of the big names that you expect, but there's some kind of, some of the lesser guys in there that you go, holy cow, I can't believe they threw them in there. Sweet. So that's our hats off to you Bond fans. Fantastic. Well, thank you once again. I think we're about out of time. Okay, thank you. For the folks that are watching, maybe we'll get you up to the studio when you guys are further along and bring the game along. You got it, anytime. Get some deathmatch on. Yep. But uh, once again, thanks for coming by. Uh, right now, we're actually going to take a look at a tour that we shot of the EA facilities here in Redwood Shores, and uh, we're going to run to that. When we come back from that, we're going to take a look at Burnout Revenge with Rich and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Julie Wynn, Manager of Community Relations and Corporate Giving here at Electronic Arts. Thought I'd take an opportunity to show off the place a little bit. Maybe you'll see something you recognize or something you want to get. Come on in. So welcome inside the lobby of our studio here at Electronic Arts. As you've just seen, our big screen is showing the clip that we showed at E3. These awards here have been started in 1998, given to teams who've sold more than half a million units of their respective games. To give you an idea of how the bar is climbing, three years ago we stopped recognizing teams who sold less than one million units. This year, we're only recognizing teams who sell more than five million units. This Ducati was used in the filming of our 1993 Road Rash game. We had a member of our team, as opposed to a professional stunt rider, take this bike out. You can see he took a turn a little too quickly. Ended up uh, skidding out, break both of his arms and two of his ribs. Got a little bit of a gnash on his head by the looks of this helmet. 
This is an example of working hard and playing harder. So when we hear that we put blood, sweat, and tears in our games, some of us really did. The real assets of the company, the reason we're able to do what we do, is the employees. We had this photo taken in 1999. We made a billion dollars that year for the first time, and we thought that we were pretty slick. So we got out in the square, circle, and triangle, three shapes of graphics, which are our original logo, out in our lawn in the main quad, and had this photo taken. In recognition of patented technology devised by our employees here at Electronic Arts, we have these plaques up in our main lobby to showcase the talent that protects our copyright on certain technology, mostly having to do with the speed with which your instructions given to the controller respond on the television or the console. Naturally, we need to have a store where we can get swag, accessories, apparel, and of course, games. Here at Electronic Arts, we try to promote and advertise not only our products here, but among our employee base. NBA Live 2003 was the first soundtrack we sold separately from one of our games. The soundtrack went platinum. And we'll see the rest of that tour in just a minute. But right now, I'm sitting here with Alex Ward, creative director of Criterion. Welcome, Alex. Oh yeah, how are you? I heard you've been through an epic travel. Something like that, yeah. Came thousands upon thousands of miles yep. for the sole purpose of just showing us right now and all of you at home Burnout Revenge. Absolutely. Let's hope uh, all the late nights and junk food have been worth it. I, I, I bet it will be now. Recently, E3 happened. Yep. I was lucky enough to be on stage with executive producer Matt Webster. He showed us the game, but we have a new preview up on the site right now and some new gameplay footage, and I hear there's been some changes made since E3. Yeah, absolutely. This is the latest version of the software we're showing today. We cut this in the middle of the night, you know, 48 hours ago, so it's greatly further on than what we showed at E3. We're showing new tracks here for the first time, which nobody outside of our team has seen yet. We're showing crash mode now to all the people here at the event today, so that's pretty exciting for us. So this is our kind of first public focus test of the software, so it's pretty nerve-wracking at times, I can tell you, but um, it's going okay so far. So and your team right now, hopefully watching it's, as they work on the game even more? It's midnight right now, and I know a few people are still in the office, so uh, Siobhan and Dave, um, I think, are still there, so hello if you're watching, guys, but um, it's a late night, so if you're still awake, well done. Nice. Now, let's hop in and see all, all the work you guys have been doing. Okay, cool. I'm going to show you uh, right now uh, one of the new tracks. Nobody's ever seen this before. This track's called Angel Valley. Um, this is a race from rank 5 of the game. Um, th this new track's just phenomenal. It's probably one of the greatest burnout tracks we've ever made. Whoa! Um, I'm driving in here in one of the supercars. It's pretty fast. And one of the new things we've got in the game you'll see straight away is what we call checking traffic. So I can hit any same way cars. This is totally new for burnout. Previously, for the previous three games, we've taught you that traffic is bad. And if you hit them, it's going to be a wreck. There's a very neat, cool new takedown, but this time, anything same way you can hit. Nice. So um, one of the key inspirations for us in the race side of the game this time has been uh, to emulate the car chase in the movie Bad Boys 2. Oh, um, no way! While we thought the movie was pretty lame, we really liked the chase sequence with the Ferrari, so, you know... Um, That's a great movie. Just imagine That movie is me. much loved around the, the GameSpot office. The first one is much better, if you ask me. Yes, the chase definitely, the obviously. Yeah. I've just taken a shortcut here as well. This is something all new for us in Burnout this time. Shortcuts and alternate routes. Look for the flashing blue lights, and I'll show you a cool shortcut. So expert players for the game will be taking all the shortcuts and secret routes around this track, which is loosely inspired by LA. Um, here we're running on PlayStation 2. We're really happy with uh, what we've got out of the machine again this year. This is a new wreck. Again, I can after touch. I can slow down time and move my car. So the new game is all about taking fighting and battle into the next level. Burnout's you know, a battle racer really at heart. Um, and again, we want to take take down to the next level, bring new game modes to the table, always improve our online experience. Oh, man. And I tell you, you know, checking traffic has completely changed Burnout, changed the way it played. There's been a lot of pressure on us to make a game better than Takedown. When we started the project, we were kind of thinking, is that going to be possible for us to do? But checking traffic changes the way Burnout um, is played. It changes the game completely. And the new game mode, which I'll show you after this, is called uh, Traffic Attack. Because whenever we make a new Burnout, we always bring a new game mode to the table. Right. If you remember, Burnout 2, we introduced Crash Mode. Yep. Burnout 3, we introduced something called Road Rage, which was a big hit. Oh. Burnout 3, we're introducing Traffic Attack. Uh, and we have some cool new stuff in tra Crash Mode. So down here, again, this is our little homage to Burnout. Um, and bad boys, I can drive along, I can check any same way vehicle. So if you see the tail lights, you can hit them. And I can use these uh, traffic cars to take down my rivals as well. So traffic check takedown 
is one of the coolest things you can do. That's a, that's a great description of a move. And now that is too big. And now I'm bailed. If, now, you hit, if you hit a semi or hit a bus, you're going to die. If you hit anything head on, you're still going to die. We, but, um, we saw this game at E3. Yeah. I remember I've, I've, I read in the preview that there were a couple of concerns raised because uh, there was some fear that every time you wrecked, you got a crash breaker. Absolutely, yeah. So that was something uh, we put in for E3. That was another one of the ideas. Crash Breaker was a big hit in crash mode right. last year. Everyone loved Crash Breaker. Oh, yeah. It's basically a little bomb and the R2 button that you can hit and uh, cause an even bigger crash. So for E3, we put Crash Breaker in racing. You know, We wanted to put Crash Breaker in the racing. For E3, we put it in every single race. But for the final software, which will get this September on PlayStation 2 and Xbox, what we call a Crash Breaker race comes in about halfway through the game. And anything after rank five, that's when you start to get a Crash Breaker race. You can also use Crash Breaker in Eliminator mode this time. So if you get taken down, you can pull the Crash Breaker oh. and take down your rivals. So it's a cool way to get something what we call explosive payback because the new game is called Burnout Revenge it's all about revenge it's all about getting even it's all about fighting battling and taking people down so that's why we put Crash Broker in the race and the Eliminator mode has been changed as well absolutely so Eliminator was lap based in the last game in the new game it's uh, kind of time based so if you're in last place you've got 30 sec if you're in last place you've got about 30 seconds to try and uh, get back in the action by doing some takedowns and so not being knocked out so Eliminator was a fun mode last time we enjoyed it but it was lap based so it means the races can go quite quite on for a long time right this time we're about to make it cooler and make it sharper oh nice I appreciate that actually because there are a couple races where there's like a hard turn right where the lap ends absolutely and if you get taken out right there all of a sudden the five cars you've been in front of catch up to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, get in Burnout, our AI always gives as good as it can get, so they drive just right. as well as any good human player, you know? You, you often get people complaining about that. They always get keep, keep, keep getting complaining that if they stack it, you know, the AI is going to catch up. But just in a real race, you know, in, in say a Grand Prix race or a, a NASCAR race, if the leader stacked it on the final turn, he would lose the race. Right. Again, takedowns are just looking phenomenal now. They're looking better than ever. The new camera, what we've done, is, is just incredible. We're really excited with it. Um, we're excited to show the software today and show off the new stuff. This was all stuff that just wasn't quite ready for E3. Um, we well, yeah, gotta take, take your time. You gotta take your time. Get it right. Yeah, it's the not... hardest part about making video games, I can tell you, is having to show your software early. You know, could you imagine seeing War of the Worlds really early when it's just come through <laughs> to a blue screen, and you're kind of going, "There's going to be some big tripods and shooting people here," and all you're seeing is Tom running down the street going, "This is terrible. They are not aliens. I don't believe it." This is what it's like when you're showing a video game. That's a great analogy. It's showing your software very early is just nerve-wracking. I guess they compare it to having a baby. Um, it can be a lot of stress, but it all turns out well in the end. Your rank was harmless there. Is that that sounds like a new? So that's the as basic well. rank. That's because we're uh, a little nod to Douglas Adams there. The ranks in the game <laughs> scale up through levels of aggression. So if you're a Hitchhiker's Guide fan, right. you'll know that the people of Earth were rated as mostly, mostly harmless. harmless. So we've dropped mostly. The opening rank in the game is harmless. Let's take you somewhere else here. Let's just um, jump out. Going to show you a new game mode here, and it's called traffic attack this is the new game mode we put in for revenge this game mode was born in about february and we were looking for a new game mode it had to be fun like crash it had to be um, violent like road rage and it had to be very easy for people to get uh, people to get and understand so once we first got the basic mechanic of checking traffic in um, this way this was born and we knew we got something when um, a guy who works for us called Ian Angus had built a, a, like a prototype version of this. It was a Friday night and if you're in game development in England, Friday night means you go off early and go to the pub. And, right. And at Criterion there's three pubs right next to our office. So there's Bummer. one across the road, one around the corner and one very, very close. So it's hard to stay out of the uh, uh, boozer. But anyway, we built the game, played it a bit, went for a drink. And the kind of what we played was so exciting that we kind of finished up in the pub quite quickly and raced back to the office all to play it and had a fight over it. So uh, <laughs> that's how we knew we got a new game mode. Probably not a great story and not one for no, the that's perfect. game development community. But yeah, this game mode was born on a Friday night. Let's pick something really fast. Now, can we show these cars right now? Yeah, you can have a look if at we, these cars. If we look yeah. at these cars real Absolutely quickly. Right. I'll scroll it back for you. All right. We've got all new car designs in the game. The car design team headed by Nakamura-san, our, our car design lead. They've just done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, some of these cars have got to get made. You know, they're they should. Fictional creations, but they look amazing, and you want to drive them. These, these are definitely the coolest cars we ever made in a Burnout game yet. I mean, these cars are seriously cool. This guy and his team, Yuta and Lee and Mikhail and the guys, have just done a fantastic job. There's some meaty cars. So the cars are split into, like, muscle cars. Mm -hmm. These are uh, cool cars built for fighting and battling, or we've got race cars. And uh, race cars are kind of sleek, lighter, built for speed. Right. Um, they're good for fighting. Let's pick this one. This is the uh, 
Oh, secret car. Didn't see it. You didn't, didn't see it. Didn't, yeah, see, a didn't see, see that either. Didn't okay, see here we go. I haven't seen a thing. Didn't Let's, see we that. Can cut it. We can cut off. Of That's that, okay. Actually. No, you can show it. I don't mind. Oh, right, good. I don't mind either. We'll show you the secret stuff. So this is traffic attack. So what I'm going to do now mm -hmm. is head over to the Orient to our new track. It's called Central Route. It's a Hong Kong inspired track. The downtown part of Hong Kong, if you've ever been there, is called Central. This is a fast, uh, short course around that area. In traffic attack, all I've got to do is hit as many same way cars as I can against the clock. Okay. So cars give me um, points and they give me time. So what I can do while I'm driving along as I hit them, I can use the left stick and after touch and clip the cars left and right. So I can score points for hitting cars, I score points for hitting cars into cars. Right. So if you've driven in San Francisco here when you come down from the airport <laughs> to EA, very straight road, that's what you want to do. All right. Our cab driver nearly did it yesterday. Nearly. We almost encouraged him. You didn't get the right cab driver then. No. Maybe, t maybe on the way home. So again, I drive along here, this is very simple. And I score points for hitting all the same way cars. I score more points if I can hit cars into the side of the road, into oncoming. Now it looks easy, but like any good video game, it has to be simple to play and difficult to master. Nice. So again, a little homage to bad boys. Now this looks just if like... if you hit um, oncoming traffic, or if you hit a big vehicle, uh -huh. you can wreck. So it's all about rhythm and pace. And the clock does not stop as it shouldn't. The clock counts down. This will be a terrible demonstration, so I have to run out of time, but no, let's see. So it's burnout meets 24. <laughs> Just without the jack power part. Oh, so, so this looks just like Hong Kong right here. And if you've been to Hong Kong, yeah. Our guys went on location and took a lot of pictures, absolutely. But it's not actually really Hong Kong. Because right. The actual real part isn't going to make the best racetrack. So no. we, we go to real places we always have since the first burnout. But, um, you know, we take pictures and we scout for reference. So for the new game, we came out to L.A., we went to um, Yosemite, we went to uh, Hong Kong, we went to Miami. And we take real pictures, but the onus on us as developers is to make a tight, fast track that plays really well. And sometimes the real places just don't, they look nice, but they don't really play well. Can you say exactly how many different places we're going to see in the game? Or that was a ton of uh, I'm, re right I'm really about. bad at maths. Uh, oh, I think fine. there's eight, but don't quote me on that. I won't. Actually, you can. Okay, Alex Ward said there are eight different locales yeah, in the game. But I'm well known for getting it completely <laughs> wrong. So, you know, ask me how many cars in the game, I couldn't tell you. Do we have any questions coming for the game? All right, cool. We do have questions coming, so you have to uh, buy us some more time while they get good. here. This will be like a Tesla camera. Exactly. Right time. I like that. So the time keeps adding up for every every, every car, car I can hear. If I hadn't crashed there, I would have stayed in the game. So I'm out of time. And we always think it's very exciting to blow the car up at the end <laughs> because we kind of like speed, you know? Right. Stay on or get off. Now, we're not going to show it today. We do have footage of it on the site. Yeah. Can you explain for us real briefly how a crash mode can be like a game of golf? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. There have been many times, I'll tell you, over the past three months that we've totally regretted ever saying that. Okay. Um, crash mode is like golf. So, crash mode last time, I guess it was kind of like 10 pin bowling. You know, the car is a bowling ball. Um, you held down X, you steered this bowling ball car into uh, an intersection and hit skittles, which were cars, and you did a big crash. And this was invented by a guy called Chris Roberts who works with us on Burnout 2. And it was a side mode in Burnout 2. We expanded it more for Burnout 3. And then for Revenge, we wanted to take it to the new level. So uh, we kind of looked at golf because we're big fans of Tiger Woods Golf. And we, we kind of looked for golf because golf is a game that has depth, skill, replay value, and strategy to it. So with Crash Mode, we wanted to get maximum replay value out of every intersection we made. So we've looked at golf, and you know, we're big fans of like Hot Shots Golf and Tiger Woods. So we looked at bringing new gameplay to the, t to the table. So if you download the video on the site, you can see that we've got um, gameplay on the start line. We call it launch control, how quickly you can get to the junction, because it's all about timing. We have gameplay when you're flying through the air, because you have to fight wind. Just like in golf, wind has an effect. Some cars are lighter than others, and there's a lot of cool jumps in the game. And then when you land on the ground, we've got gameplay because you're looking to get enough cars in the wreck to get Crash Breaker. Now, Crash Breaker, we just gave it to you on R2 in the last game, but this time you have to button bash R2. Right. So once you activate Crash Breaker, you get a time period. And again, because we're big old style track and field fans, you have to tap R2 as quick nice. as you can. Kind of like getting um, spin in Tiger, and you have to button bash R2. And then the final icing on the cake is that if you cause a big enough wreck, target vehicle is going to come in. Kind of like the mystery ship in Space Invaders. <laughs> Although, if you're really into Space Invaders like I was, the mystery ship appeared every 22 shots, even if you use the Nagoya method. But anyway, target car comes in, bit of game culture there, old school. That was great. Um, a target car comes in and you'll get a bonus for wrecking the target car. So you've got to do a big crash, make a lot of cars wreck and blow up, and take down the target car. And um, it's different. 
It's nerve-wracking showing it off today because people have never seen it before, and we say car crash mode, it's like golf with cars, people think we're insane. But um, we've shown it on the, on the show floor here at Hot Summer Nights, people are liking it so far and it's pretty cool. And you can download a video on your site of um, one of the coolest ones in the game, which um, was pulled off by uh, Justin at GameSpot just last night, so that's well, right. worth, well worth looking at. I think I, that, one, that one seemed like it was inspired by, I think it was the TPC at Sawgrass or something, Hole 16 or whatever, yeah. it was with the island green. Yeah, yeah, They're all, all the crash engines are based on kind of real golf holes. Even though you regret saying that. <coughs> well, yeah, it's kind of hard, right? Because <laughs> nobody understands it. They think we're I understand. Yeah. If, when, when you go watch the gameplay movie after the show, and you will understand Maybe perfectly. then it makes sense. It makes, once you see that, it makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Would you care to take some questions from Sure, John? no problem. All right, great. First question is from John in Ireland. For Burnout 3, there seems to be that slight feeling of frustration whenever you get pummeled in the game. Does Burnout Revenge relieve that feeling easily, if not prevent it altogether? Sure, so one way we fix that is if you're in a crash breaker race, if you get pummeled, you can pull crash breaker and blow the other guy up and get explosive payback. So um, that's definitely one way you can do it. But it's like any good video game, right. you get pummeled, you take a beating, and then you have to rise again like a true champion. Or you can just go play some Road Rage, which I always felt... Uh, absolutely kind of right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Bryce in Monroe, Washington, are you expecting to be locked at 30 frames per second, 60 frames a second? Well, Bryce in Washington, you've obviously uh, not followed Burnout over the past five years, <laughs> because um, as all the GameSpot crew will tell you today, Burnout is all about 60 frames a second. So it is. we've never not made a Burnout game that doesn't run at 60 frames. We have a question from Phoenix. Will there be any connectivity options between Revenge on PS2 and Legends on PSP? No, that's a very good question. Sadly not. Um, it was something we did think about. Um, let's say that maybe if we ever do another one in the future, maybe we'll do it. That's good. That's a good yeah. answer. Greg Koshman in Trenton, Ontario. We, we've, we've talked about this. Are you able to do a crash breaker at every crash? Only in certain modes. No, so you can do it in Eliminator and you can do it in crash breaker races, which come about halfway through the game. Cool. Stephen Chen in Miami, Florida. How many supercars will be available? Again, math. Um, a lot. A lot. Good answer. Yeah. Jordy in Fort Worth, Texas. Are you going to use all the tracks that you did in Burnout 3? And, and we've already talked about the new location, so we'll just stop right there. No, there's no, no B3 stuff in Revenge, but the B3 tracks do appear in Legends on PSP. And John Latour, we just talked about the crash mode for you. Ah, uh, vertical takedowns. Oh, yeah, that's something nobody's asked about. Yeah. yeah. Shame on me for not mentioning it. That's probably my BlackBerry emailing me with the team saying, tell them about vertical takedowns. Um, yeah, so vertical takedowns is when a car lands on top of another car. So there's a lot of jumps in the game and pushing people off cliffs. Right. So we figured the coolest takedown of all is when you're going to land on top of somebody else and take them out. It is, and I'll add, I will attest to that. We had it on the show last week. There is a demo available with Madden, and it, they set you up perfectly right at the beginning of the demo. You go up on this little ledge, and you can drop down right yeah. between two cars, vertical Definitely. takedown. Vertical takedown is very cool. So when you've had... Play a bit of gridiron, then you can play the Burnout demo. That's going to be the first place you can see Burnout Revenge. And that comes out Which August, is on Madden in August, yeah, which is pretty cool. Final questions. Uh, are there any cool things added for online? More players, new interface? Uh, yes, there's an online progression system, which I'm not going to talk about right now. But yeah, the uh, online stuff is cool. That's all I'll say. That's great. Yeah. And I, I, I was going to say, I had some... I had some I wouldn't say doubts. I was a little worried because I played the demo on that. Never be worried. It's the burnout I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried. Never was, be worried. I was, I, was, I was afraid that because after, as we were talking about before the show, when you play Burnout Revenge, it's very difficult to go back to Burnout 3. Absolutely. Because once you traffic check, you, what, you want mean, to do it all the time. That 94 rated, 45 um, uh, perfect score, uh, 45 global award winning <laughs> game, Burnout 3, the best racing game in the world that you won't know how to proceed in life unless you've bought it. Which is a great buy at twenty dollars now, if, I, if I'm not too sure. It's yeah. true. Even if you play Burnout Three and you love it and think it's fantastic, I'll tell you, as the one of the first people on the Burnout team ever, once you've checked traffic in Burnout Revenge, it's hard to go back to B3. But you don't need to because you have Burnout Revenge now. Absolutely. Great. So Burnout Revenge coming in September on PlayStation Two and Xbox. If you liked Three and you think we can't top it, give us the benefit of the doubt. Come and see Revenge. Cool. Thanks for coming by, Alex. No worries. And I'll uh, try to stop by and see that certain other game afterwards sure come on by we appreciate it and alex ward everyone creative director of criterion check out burnout revenge coming soon right now though speaking of racing recently brian eckberg and jim Abery got to go to chicago to see uh, nascar 06 and uh cool. hit the track a little bit here's what they had here's what they saw check it out GameSpot recently visited the famous Chicagoland Speedway to get some hands-on experience with ea's upcoming nascar 06 total team control The highlight of the weekend was a ride along in a Dodge Hemi Magnum. Our driver got the oddly shaped wagon up to 120 miles per hour. 
giving us a first-person thrill ride around the 1.5-mile tri-oval track. The most gripping part of the ride was entering steep banks of the track at high speed. Wandering around the infield gave us an inside look at all the activities in and around the garage. The cars are anything but quiet and the fumes from the racing fuel left us with a burning sensation. The defending Nextel Cup champ, Kurt Busch, took a minute out of his busy practice schedule to share his thoughts on EA's NASCAR video games. Road courses are great to get good knowledge off of them. Those have been uh, the biggest impact for me in video games. I go and try to play the uh, indie road course all the time. I can form the one guy's drive on. Good, good uh, hindsight to know where things are for Watkins Glen and Sonoma. I would say in a, in a video game concept you could put uh, when you get your last set of tires for the race, there's no more teammates. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much where you come off pit road and if there's a teammate right in front of you, he's going to make it tough for you to pass it. Watching the race from the infield isn't as glamorous as it might seem. It's difficult to see the entire track unless you're up high, like on top of the big many RVs that litter the area. The real action, though, takes place in the pits. The frantic pick change is probably the closest thing most people, including us, will ever get to see the action of stock car racing. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Martin Truex Jr. also got a chance to check out NASCAR 06 and talk to us about their teammates in the game and on the track. Oh, it can be tough sometimes, you know, especially when you're in second, but uh, when you're leading, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on, you know, I think it depends on a lot of personality, too. I mean, if you're if I'm racing against Martin, me and him are friends, so we're going to treat each other with a lot of respect, and we're going to want to help each other. And I think it would be the same thing. Over the internet, over across the internet, on broadband, playing the game, with your team, your, you know, you and your buddy, your teammates, you know, you're going to look out for each other. NASCAR is an exciting sport. It's filled with high octane adrenaline, fast cars, and of course, competitive drivers. EA hopes to capture that feel with NASCAR 06. Will it succeed? Find out when NASCAR 06 is released later this year. Till then, keep checking back with us for the latest updates here at GameSpot.com. And we're back. Uh, more of On The Spot Live here at EA uh, headquarters. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Pretty good. We're going to be taking a look at our, our new Madden 06. So uh, for the folks at home, why don't you go ahead and tell them who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is uh, Chris Herb. I'm the senior product manager for Madden NFL 06. Excellent. Now, pretty much at this point, all the stories, all the videos, everything we got on the site, the cat's out of the bag on Madden, right? Uh, I think you guys know about everything <laughs> there is to know. I've been on the site, and uh, you guys have it all, I think. Excellent. So today we're going to give folks a chance at home to ask a bunch of questions of yourself right here. Okay. Uh, so if you're a GameSpot Complete member, go ahead and use the page, uh, fill out the form, send them on over to us, we'll get them right to him. And in the meantime, we're going to be playing some Madden, give folks at home a little taste of what it's going to be like when it comes out. And when are you guys playing the ship right now? Uh, August 9th is the day, available everywhere August 9th, just like NCAA on uh, Tuesday. We uh, will have a one-day lay down where uh, everybody can get it at every store. So hopefully they'll go out on the 8th at uh, midnight and uh, pick up their copies. So. And, and just so we're, we're totally complete, what are the formats that you guys will be hitting on August 9th? Uh, about everything that there is, yeah. almost. Yeah. Does that include the PSP? Uh, PSP is shipping September 20th, mm -hmm. kind of giving it its own little window there because uh, we're so excited about it. But we will be on uh, Xbox, PS2, GameCube. Uh, you know the hand of the DS and, the, and Game Boy Advance, so pretty pretty exciting. So excellent. Now this thing that you got loaded right here is straight up just the Madden 06. Yeah, we're ready to go. Title screen, and so we're gonna get our game on. We are. I'm the Sea. I'm I'm from Seattle. I'm a Seattle guy, so I'm I'm the Seahawks. You're gonna go with the Seahawks. I am. The Seahawks go has got a pretty good overall. I think I'm gonna have to switch up my uh, my team over here. Let's see what I got. Where are you going? What I wanna, team are you going with? I want to go with the. Uh, I want to go with the Oakland Raiders. How are they doing? This? Raider it is. Uh, oh, there we go. Little Randy Moss action. There we go. So uh, yeah. Speaking of Randy Moss, one of the questions I did see uh, prior to us coming on the show that a lot of people were asking is, it's crazy. You've got the most avid fans in the world for any game because they're already asking, when's the the first roster update coming out? And like, when's the cutoff? They want to know how that roster is going to sit when the game ships. Uh, for Randy Moss fans, he's already in, obviously. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we, uh, we, we wait as long as we can before we got to get that stuff into the game. Um, Are you guys still waiting right now? Uh, we actually just locked. Oh, you did? So we're ready to go. We're, uh, we're rocking and rolling. It's done. And uh, 
a little party last week to celebrate the uh, <laughs> celebrate the finish. These, you know, the production team, those guys back at home, uh, Phil Frazier, Matt Frederick, and Josh Loom, and all these guys that put. You know, there's a, there's a huge team back there who just work their tails off um, to get this thing done, and these guys are, are working so long and working so hard, and uh, and the game looks great. So we have to do a little bit of celebrating once uh, once this thing gets locked. Kind so of like our our own little wrap party, if you will. Nice. Now, of course, the big stuff for folks that do, don't know, vision and precision. That's one of the big the big new things you guys got this yeah. year. Uh, yeah, if it, you know, we, we took a look at, at at the game, and it felt like, you know, the game has been great, and, you know, this is our 16th year, and we feel like we've had uh, a really authentic NFL experience. Yeah. Um, but, but we felt like the one thing we could do uh, moving forward is, is work on our passing game. It, it really hasn't changed in the last 10 years, ever since we brought down the passing windows, if you remember that. Yeah. Um, it's It's been, uh, it's yeah, it's, let's, let's get you in here. It's a... Uh, it's been pretty similar, um, and, and so this year it's really our chance to take a look at the passing game and see, you know, what we can do to really enhance it. And I think we came up with a, a pretty cool, uh, a, a pretty cool feature called vision and precision. The idea is users are now going to see what the quarterbacks see on the field, um, and and so the idea there is, is no longer are people going to be Michael Vick, uh, run around just kind of throwing the ball wherever they want. They are. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna have to focus on what the quarterbacks focus on in the NFL, and that is seeing what's down the field. So the idea is, you know, you, you drop back and you gotta look downfield. And, and we sat with a lot of quarterbacks when we we're working on the feature, trying to get it right. And you know, Donovan McNabb and, and Dante Culpepper and a lot of these guys really helped us understand what what you're supposed to be looking at when you're a quarterback. And uh, and we think we kind of nailed it. So we're pretty excited about it. We'll get in some gameplay here, and I'll, I'll show you how the cone works. Okay. What else, uh, as we as we load it up and get the uh, vision precision going, what else are you real proud of this year? Uh, it, it, just so the folks know, you were telling me this is your first year on the Madden Series, right? It is, yeah. It's it's kind of an honor. Uh, I, I actually, uh, I, I've been a lifer, kind of kind of a Madden guy for life, and uh, had the opportunity to come down and uh, and work on the franchise. And it's, That's just really like a dream come true, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm kind, of, kind of out of my... Out, out of my mind, just just every day I'm going to work. I'm working on Madden. It's like, wow, are you kidding me? <laughs> so uh, it's it's kind of an honor. So uh, I've, you know, the first couple of days you're like just walking around, uh, meeting people that you're like, wow, I know you, but I don't, you know, I haven't met you. So it's great to get to work with some of these guys. So um, we, uh, you know, we've been there a while now, and uh, I, I think we've got it in really good shape. There's a lot of things that we're proud of. I think the vision and precision is, is probably my favorite edition this year. We've also added Superstar Mode, NFL Superstar, which uh, people have been on the side of seeing is, is kind of like Franchise Mode, uh, it's a, but it's a single player mode and it's, instead of managing an entire team and, and, and a lot of the stuff that goes into that, you're managing a player, one player's career, um, and really trying to, trying to take that guy from being a rookie to uh, an NFL Hall of Fame. I mean, the second. That's okay. <laughs> into, uh, into, I saw how that works. See, I wasn't even watching. I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, been doing this a while. Um, he, he's taking advantage of my my, my lack of <laughs> vision and precision and skill over here, Rich. He's he's sacking me without without letting me get my my, my throwing off. What team you pick? I picked the Raiders. <laughs> wow, there's a comment on their offensive oh, it, line. It's huh? all right. He wears like Patriots jerseys on every show, so I think people know that. He, so. Let's see. Oh, look there at it. Randy go. Moss going to work. Right, penalty on the Seahawks, too. So look at that. Look at that. All around good play. What you see there is uh, we actually added, which we haven't talked about, is um, our precision passing, which is the first time we've really been able to let, you know, usually Madden, the, the receiver always tries to catch the ball here. So if we throw a deep ball, he's backing up trying to catch it there. This year. We can actually take a look at Randy Moss going up there, huh? He's going up for it right there. Yeah, so it's a high ball. And if you push your... Uh, there you go. So, you know, that's, that's something that's kind of different for us. It's really, you know, you can throw the high ball, you can throw the you can throw the jump ball. You want to hit triangle out of that? Thank you. Um, and, and, uh, and, you know, lead receivers, throw low balls. Perfect example of what you want to do with Randy Moss is just let him go get it, if you will. Throw one way down the field or throw one up and, and, and just let him go get it because he's such an athlete. So... Um, you know, my Seahawks don't quite have those receivers. Right so, now. how do you hold up here against the uh, the veterans? Um, oh. I have uh, I've been holding my own with the marketing guys. 
it's uh, it's the production guys. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> I still gotta buy, I gotta build some time, and uh, they know they know every little trick in the book. So um, I'm uh, I'm on my way to learning those. Like I said, I'm new, but uh, we'll, I'll uh, I'll get those down. I'll get those down. I'm getting some questions here, so I'm gonna throw my at your direction if you don't mind. No, absolutely. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this play here. No, go ahead. Quick. No, go ahead and read them while I'm, while we're playing here. That's fine. <laughs> I see how it. Oh, look at that! You just uh, no oh, mercy. That was no mercy. Yeah. So while I throw these questions at you, you okay. want to load up since you're killing me anyways. Might as well load up the superstar mode and show that off. Yeah, absolutely. And while you do that, let's see what we have here. We've got Ed Witt from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He wants to know what do you think is the best and most significant change that Madden 06 has from its prior versions? I guess we kind of talked about that. We did a little bit. I mean, I think off camera, you and I talked about what the best things in the game were. Uh, Superstar is right now is is a really cool thing. What I think, I think vision and precision is going to change the way people play football games in general. And to me, that's pretty exciting. It's going to be a shock. I think first time people get their hands on it. Um, but once they get into it, it's, a, it's such a fun mode. And uh, I've been going back and playing 05 a lot. And uh, I, it's a great game, but I feel like something's missing. So mm -hmm. I've really adapted really well to 06. So I'm pretty excited about it. Joe C. out of Pennsylvania wants to know, he read somewhere that in addition to Vision Precision, you actually touched on this moments ago uh, about the high and the low passes. Mm -hmm. He was hoping that you could elaborate a little bit of that, like specifically the gameplay. What do you do to make it so you go high? Which way do you go? Yeah, no, absolutely. So the, uh, the idea there is, is as, you, as, you press, as you press your pass button, um, you're going to control where you go with the ball with your right analog stick. So, you know, you're moving your quarterback and you want to throw a high ball, you're going to go up. You want to throw a low ball, you go down. And depending on which way your receiver's running, you're going to press left, left and right to, to lead him, lead or, him or right. to come behind him, you know, if you've got a defender in front Try of you. Try to pull so, him out, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's at the pass stage and it's, it's with the right analog. Excellent. This is from Alexander Knight and Van Nuys. Since you're in QB vision mode and it's harder than without it, is that true? Is it harder than without it? Uh, to play, say that again. Because uh, you can actually turn the QB Vision mode off, right? You can if if it's something that uh, you know that you it's not working for you. You can actually turn it off. We've actually we've kind of tuned it to every level. So on pro level, when you load up, when you're passing outside of the vision cone, mm -hmm. you're not going to get as severe penalties. But as you work up in the progressions, it's going to be tougher and tougher. So when you get to all Madden level, after the receivers are done running their routes, the icons are actually going to fall off the screen and you're only going to be able to pass to people within that cone of vision. So that's, I say all Madden's the toughest, but uh, it, there's a level for everybody, so you know you can build your comfort level up. I, I also suggest a practice mode. A lot of people don't get into practice mode, but to, for me, that was the best thing for me, is to just jump into practice mode and really just understand the buttons. And, and you know, I've, I've played a lot of the guys here at Outsummer Nice, and, and people are, uh, they're so competitive the first time they pick it up. So <laughs> sit at home, play in the practice mode, because you don't want to lose any games, you know, especially your first one. So, so practice it, and, and uh, you'll get used to it pretty quick. All right. What is the screen that you have loaded up right here? So this is NFL Superstar, and the idea with NFL Superstar is, is like I said, you're, uh, you're controlling the career uh, of a single player. Now, you can load in your, uh, your NFL or NCAA legend or your uh, Street 2 player into this or you can start your own and, and what we're doing here is we're starting our own this is kind of the DNA screen and what you're seeing is you know I'm seeing my mom and I'm seeing my dad I'm gonna pick my DNA because what better way to start than pick your own DNA right so you can have the best player possible so you look at the chart here my dad's a Pro Bowl defensive back he likes juggling and his IQ is 92 um, my mom is a SWAT officer. She collects movie posters, and her IQ is 126. <laughs> now, uh, Pro Bowl defensive back is kind of cool, but a 92 IQ is not so cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pick again. Okay. Uh, so I pick again. Uh, defensive two, you know, second division two linebacker. He collects football cards. 87. My mom is an eighth grade coach. She's bowler, and IQ is 140. So we're getting some good moms. Let's try it one more time. Yeah. Um, you know, mathematician. Let's, I guess we're just going to go with this. Okay. But you can see at the top, it's going to give you an idea of uh, what, what position best fits me. And this is a quarterback, and I want to play a quarterback, so we'll go ahead. So we'll move forward. This is kind of like your combine registration forms. You can flip through your, uh, you can flip through here, change this, change your look, change your feel. And change, uh, you can change your college, and these are imported from NCAA. So all the colleges that are in NCAA are, uh, are listed in here. So we're going to go to Washington because... Uh, I'm a Washington guy. So. I'm glad you mentioned NCAA. That's which one of the other questions we just got in. Tyler uh, Vivanco in Viejo, California wants to know, with NCAA 06 just coming out, when Madden 06 comes out, will it be hard to draft your character from NCAA 06 to Madden? No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really simple. When, you know, I, I actually just got 
my NCAA copy of the day, and I'm uh, six or seven games in already. Uh, I'm trying to win the Heisman, so as soon as Madden comes out, I can I can <laughs> I can take my Heisman guy and put it right in. It's right on the options menu for for Street. It says you want to load a guy or create a new player, so it's super easy. You save it on your memory card, and you can load it right in. And if you load, uh, we'll go through the draft here. I'll, I'll show you the schedule and some of these different things. Okay. But the the first thing you're going to see is we'll go into the draft, and and if I'm bringing in my Heisman from NCAA Heisman winner, I'm going to go higher in the draft. So you, know, you take a look, couple look at a couple things. This is my schedule, uh -huh. and we'll go back to the apartment and take a look at some other things. But this is the schedule, and this is what I do. Um, you know, I can go meet with my mentor. Uh, Terrell Davis is in the game. He's our mentor, so he'll give you some. He'll send you voicemails, send you emails, let you know what's going on, kind of walk you through the mode. The other thing that will happen is that we've got. Uh, you can sign an agent, so we'll go in. Got to sign an agent before the draft. Uh, you'll go in, take a look at your agents here. Uh, every day, those will come up. You have different things to do. We've got nothing in the morning and nothing in the afternoon. We're having an evening meeting with our agent, so we'll start the event. We'll go in there, and you can see at the top there's. You know different attributes for the agents. So we've got negotiation, influence, interview, endorse, and the Performance Institute. So all these agents that are listed on uh, my left are all the different agents that are in the game. Now these guys in red are not really interested in signing me uh, because I'm nobody right now. I've got this Jason Morales guy. Uh, we'll, we'll go with him because he's interested in me. No one else is really interested in me. I got another question for you. Yeah, if you're ready. No, absolutely. John Shockley out of Frederick. Uh, Marilyn wants to know, when you retire on Superstar mode, can you create another player and start from where you retired and just keep get drafted from there and keep going? I guess he's speaking about the, that particular time period. Uh, yeah, you know, once you retire, you're kind of retired. Um, so, you, you, you know, you're welcome to start another player, but, you know, it depends on when you, you may not get the choice to retire. We may retire you for you. Oh, wow. uh, you get a career-ending injury, you're, you're done. So be careful. Um, the other thing that's really cool is if you have a good Superstar and you're doing well, you can, uh, you can make it on the cover of Madden, but... Careful if you get on the cover of Madden, you never know what will happen. <laughs> Maybe a little Madden jinx there. So, we, so we've signed our agent, we're going to jump in. Um, we're going to go into the draft. So you take a look at the draft. These are the actual picks um, in this year's draft going in order. And we're just like the player. We're kind of sitting back at home trying to figure out where we're going to go in the draft. Um, there's an IQ test we kind of skipped over for time, but you'll be able to go in there and take an IQ test. That'll give the teams a little bit more knowledge about you. And there's a lot of things you do up front to get to this end point of the draft. We, uh, we skipped over some. We didn't import a player, so we're going to go pretty low. So mm -hmm. That's just unfortunate. I'm not going to do that at home. I'm going to win my highs, but I'm going to go higher in the draft. Um, Aaron DeLone from Yalto, California, wants to know, are they going to... You obviously talked about the Madden 06 is going to come out for the PSP in September. Mm -hmm. um, is Now, obviously, and that's something we'll get to, I'm sure, with this. Is the PSP version going to be online? This one is obviously online. Are you guys going to do any online with the PSP? Yeah, no, absolutely. We're The, the PSP skew right now is, is great. You're going to be able to do both ad hoc and infrastructure with oh. PSP. So you'll be able to do both. As a matter of fact, your PSP is actually going to link to your PS2. Uh, there's two ways to link it. You can link it with a USB cord, or you can use uh, one of our new features online, which is called the EA Locker. It's kind of like a memory card in the sky, and what people can do is put files up on their lockers and share them with other people all across the country. So you can actually, if you want, have a, a franchise on the PS2, take those files to your PSP, play the franchise games on your PSP, and put them back on your PS2 if you want. So you're telling me I can start, I can start my, my franchise on here? Mm -hmm. I can be playing, and then I could decide I'm going to go on vacation, and I could decide that I don't want to give up my my progress, so I'm going to take it with me on the road with my PSP. Yeah, absolutely. Do that, and then come back and plug it in. Uh, it's really yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's I love it. It's, I travel a lot, so it's awesome for me. That is awesome. So you can take up to a week's worth of games, and the nice thing is the PSP also has its own franchise mode, so it's got a fully integrated franchise mode. So you know you can uh, you can play your PS2 games, or if you're engrossed in a PSP franchise, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of great stuff about the PSP. We've also got 18 mini games. Wow. In the PSP, ten of which are exclusive just to the PSP. So, are they the similar games that we're used to with like the mini camp mode stuff? Or? The mini, yeah, because we have the full franchise mode. Uh, you know, eight of those the mini camp games come over to the PSP. Then we've got ten other ones. We've got a forty yard dash, nice. uh, which is kind of a button, button mashing kind of thing, which is fun. We've got uh, some quarterback skills things. We've got some running ones, and then the ones I really like are like the kick return and punt return ones because I always need practice at those, so uh, we've added those. So there's a lot of cool stuff that's exclusive to the PSP. It's, it's going to be a really fun, uh, fun game that comes out September 20th. Right on. Uh, I've got a ton of more questions, and they just keep on pouring in. Good, good. So, we like so it. I'll, I'll keep them coming your way unless you want okay. me to be quiet for a while. If you want no, to I'd, I'll just walk through the mode. What we're doing here is we're looking at our schedule in August, and um, I can back out, but we've been drafted by the Dolphins, and I can show you a little bit more of this. So we're in Miami now, so 
here's uh, here's kind of Dolphin Stadium, the practice field right now. There's a barber shop, so we can go in and uh, fix up our looks. How, now, just uh, I'm crazy, but like, how realistic is that overhead shot? That's of, a real shot. Are you serious? Yeah, no, like no, a satellite absolutely. photo. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I don't know if there's a barber shop right there in Miami, <laughs> but that's that's the real photo of uh, that's that's the that's the stadium. And you guys have one for um, all of them? Yeah, every team's got a stadium, an aerial shot. You know, we had a little wider shot of it, but we, we you know we kind of tightened it up. We really like the way this this works, and we've done some usability, and it, and it works really well. We, we can put some uh, put some ink on our guys. Uh, go ahead and get some ink. Uh, you know, there's a stadium. There's a performance institute, which we don't have access to right now because we're kind of crummy. But if you, uh, as you as you progress in the game and as you get better and as you start to become a superstar, you can fire your agent and hire a new one. And those guys will have access to the performance institute. And once you get in the performance institute, you can uh, you can run practice drills, which will increase your players' abilities. So, really cool. Excellent. I'm going to throw some more questions. And then this apartment, this just serves as a hub for all getting around. Yeah, this is kind of your menu uh, of what's going on. So here's, here's your map that we were in. Here's kind of the cell phone where you'll get, uh, you'll get your messages from Terrell Davis. You know, we've got, we've got voicemails. We, we get emails. You know. can, I, can I hear T.O. telling uh, me some business? Let's see if he's left us a message. Yeah, we'll get in there. It's like, yo, T.O., I'm in the NFL now. Terrell Davis. There's an email. There's a voicemail from Lester. There's a voicemail from Terrell. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's well, play him, but uh, I think we got the volume down. You've gotten a big day Excellent. over. All right, these guys are trying to piss off. All right. <laughs> I, I would keep you here all day, cause, and I think the fans at home would too, because there's a ton of questions. So I'm going to throw one more at you, and then we're, we'll toss it okay. off unless there's anything you definitely want to make sure you tell us or show us no, before I'd we stay as long as you guys will have me. I all appreciate right. being here. Uh, Renato out of New Jersey wants to know what has been done to balance the running game. Um, obviously, you guys have been focusing on the passing game. Um, and he's wondering if the pass interference stuff has been cleaned up. Any comments to any of those things, running game? Uh, running game this year, uh, you know, we focused on defense a lot, and the defensive players got to lay those big hits last year. And I, as a defensive fan, that was really the first time for me personally, and speaking for myself, that was the first time I really had fun playing defense. Um, so, And what I loved was the hit stick. So we decided to bring the hit stick to the offensive side of the ball, and so we've got this year what we call the truck stick. So now running backs are going to be able to come in and lay that big big boom to the, to the defensive back. So Sean Alexander, you get him in there, he can knock some people out. But you get a guy like Warwick Dunn, be careful who you're trying to lay the truck stick on. <laughs> All right, these guys are going to kill me if I don't toss it off here. So I'm going to do just that. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having really me. Really appreciate Great. it. Great. August 9th. Fantastic. Thank you once again. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our second part of our EA tour. Went around the campus checking stuff out. So we're going to roll to that. When we come back from that, we're going to come back and check out some SSX with Rich. So without further ado, take it away. In order to remember our roots, how we started out, and the low pixel count, we decided to set up some milestones down this hallway. Sky Fox, pinball construction set, Sky Fox, one-on-one -on -one basketball. These are our first products. We have the box art and screenshots here to remember how we started out. Trip Hawkins from Apple was the creator of Electronic Arts. We started out as Amazing Software back in 1982. And he and two of his marketing friends were our first ad campaign. There they are looking in a different direction with binoculars. The tagline was, we see farther. I think that might still be the case. This group of artists are original designers and developers here at Electronic Arts. What's interesting about this photo, in contrast to the executive photos today, uh, they're sitting back in a casual pose wearing what they usually wear instead of standing up straight in suits being filmed by Fortune and Newsweek. This photo was taken by Norman C., who's a photographer for the Rolling Stone. The uh, challenge they put towards themselves and the industry as a whole was, can a computer make you cry? Can you elicit an emotional response from a television screen or from your computer? Perhaps the original screenshots, the original games, the answer would be questionable. However, I think the answer is definitely yes today. We are in the Annals of the Media Lab. This is the area that is responsible for the televisions around campus, for a lot of the voiceover editing, a lot of the video editing you see in our games. And I believe there is a voiceover session happening right now, and if we can go take a peek at it, we will. Hi! Uh, do you mind if we just take some pictures for GameSpot? They don't, they won't do sound if you don't want them to? I don't, I don't know about that. Okay, so we'll just... 
two elements that keep recruiting on campus, of course, are games and sports. We have a game room in every one of our buildings and, of course, games in every lobby. This game room is available to employees 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's reservable for parties, but not for meetings because this is only for fun. Welcome to the EA Sports Bar. This is a replica of a sports bar. As you can see, this is now a conference room, one we use for staff meetings, conference parties, and just parties. We have something signed by every celebrity athlete who's appeared in our product. Back from the beginning, with the white satin jacket from uh, Jordan and Bird, to present day with the golf clubs signed by Tiger Woods. As we learned over in the other building, we had a 1993 exclusive deal signed by John Madden. We have a winning ball from the NFL and the AFL ever since then signed. Also, of course, a ball by John. We have a shoe from Shaquille O'Neal and that of Michael Jordan here. This is a real fun change of venue, uh, not only for meetings, but for interviews of prospective athletes, clients, and the press. And we're back, and I'm joined right now by Steve Anthony, producer of... SSX on Tour. SSX on Tour. Very excited to see this game right now. SSX3, a beautiful game, award-winning. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. And uh, yeah, we're here to demo uh, the new one and show you what it's all about. Now, the first thing that hits you about SSX on Tour is the style. Definitely. We, we saw the trailer, the first trailer that came out, and we saw the crazy-looking mountain. We're like, oh, that, that looks really cool for art for a trailer. And then... If you look closer, on the bottom it says, by the way, you know, press the arrows to select your level, select your trail, move on. Yep. Show us right now how this art style has actually translated into this game. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, I mean, I can, I'll can i talk you through kind of what it was first. And, and basically it's, you know, looking at the culture where uh, the snowboarding comes from, obviously, and skiing. And, and bringing some more youth into the franchise. So, you know, the spontaneity, uh, the fun, and... and Overall, it's just kind of pervasive for throughout the game. So uh, you'll see it both in the HUD, you'll see it in the front end, and uh, it's pretty cool. We're excited by it. I think it's very unique for video games. Let's jump right so, in. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, take check it, it out. So the first event we're going to take you through here is uh, basically a collectible event. So you're trying to find uh, collect 15 skull by, uh, which is kind of a collectible that we've come up with. Uh, and you'll see once we get in the game. Again, it ties in with this whole front end. So, so a skull this is... A skullvis is a skull head with a, a bit of Elvis hair on top of it. Obviously. So, yeah, obviously. You know, it all fits together. <laughs> so. so here's the race starting up right now. Yeah, so we drop you right in the oh, world. There's one right there. And there's one right there, so you'll just start collecting them. Now, some people might say, hey, wait a minute. SSX, that's a snowboarding franchise. What's this guy doing on two planks? Yep. Yeah, it's something new that we've added, and uh, you know we looked at a bunch of different things this year, and, and in the end we uh, we felt that it offered enough uh, differentiation and player choice that that it were, was worthy of kind of going into the franchise. And so far, the feedback's been really positive. You know, people just love it. Now, with a change of style, I'm guessing we're looking at a little more rock and roll in this version of SSX. Definitely, yeah. So we, we've gone away a bit from the uh, the techno music of the past and, and kind of done a bit of a refresh on the music. And what we've tried to do is uh, we've tried to cater the music a bit more to what type of event you're playing. So whether you're in a race event or a trick event, you'll notice the music's a little bit different. So for race, a more frenetic kind of experience, you'll, you'll see that uh, you'll get the rock and roll music. And uh, while you're in a trick event, get a bit more uh, laid back kind of down tempo um, um, hip hop. Cool. So kind of tailored to how, uh, how the experience is going for the player as we've always done in the past. Now tell us a little about the mountain we're looking at right now. Yeah, so uh, one big mountain again. Um, the key difference, uh, a couple key things this year is we've gone to a full streaming system. So what that allows us to do is really kind of give you uh, seamless gameplay from top to bottom. Whereas in the past, last year, we, we had flatter sections where the gameplay kind of suffered. This year we were allowing you to go from top to bottom and really play through. Um, the second key difference is there's no longer a standalone track per se, so there's no longer a big air event track, um, and there's no longer a uh, slope style track or a race track. What we've done is we've built them all into one track uh, throughout the mountain. So you'll go from a big air section into a race section, then into a slope style section. Nice. And, uh, you know, just basically seamless gameplay from top to bottom. And so. there's still, like, does, do different parts of the mountain have 
a different visual style? Definitely. So we've got basically four main areas on the mountain. So there's the North Peak, uh, the West Resort, the East Resort, and then kind of the village area. And within each of these, you know, there'll be different lighting, color palettes, uh, and unique kind of architecture cool. to each one. And, where, and of course, the gameplay. Where were we just at? So we were just in the, uh, in the West Peak, and cool. we're going over to the East now. So. Nice going over to the East side. And, and also new is the there's like a career mode kind of yeah so what we're what we're showing you here is basically what we've done is we've taken what are kind of our baby steps in SX3 and we've really built those out so the player has way more purpose to how they play the game and it's not such a linear experience anymore it's a really an organic experience as you play through the game so what we're playing through here is basically your first few events of your career uh, basically what we're calling shred events and they're kind of uh, they're per more personal events um, much more um, tailored towards just person, personal and one-on-one -on -one challenges or world-based challenges to kind okay. of build up your hype. Right. Develop you as a... Basically, you're developing yourself and you're trying to get yourself onto the, uh, onto the charts, which is basically the leaderboard, which is where the SSX characters from the past reside. And you're basically trying to, you're trying to get the same fame and glory they've, they've had for years and, and you know, take your creative character to that point. And that provides us with a perfect segue how many SSX characters are returning to the game? We're going to have uh, seven characters come back from uh, from the past, and we've added uh, three new characters to the game. And can you tell us some names? Now, I already, already made sure that my man Nate was returning. Your man Nate is returning. Uh, you know, Mac will be there. Elise will be there. Kaori. And, uh, you know, I'll leave the others uh, up to the imagination. But, cool. Uh, There'll, there'll be some more coming I'm, back. I'm sure, sure. We'll, I'm sure we'll hear here yeah. in the in the days and months to come. That, were, that was a really quick race. That was. That was just a quick little event. Um, you know, we're demoing off a bunch of these things, so we, we've tuned them so they're relatively easy. Um, with the full streaming, we can have top to bottom events that last uh, quite a while. So I'll pick one of the longer ones now. Nice. Which is basically a two track race across two venues, um, and this is one of the metal events. So once you do get your hype up, you'll go in and play an event like this. Uh, which is the more standard kind of structured SSX event of the past. I'd say, I'd say my favorite part of, of SSX3 was the 45 minute race from top to bottom. Yep. Yeah. Can you, can we, you say You'll be how doing it again? 45 minutes? Uh, left, it was actually, you know? it was actually uh, only a half an hour last time. Okay. Uh, oh, unless you're like, following a lot. I, I took my time, you know, it looks great. You maybe hour, maybe you're just minutes. enjoying the scenery. Yeah. But, uh, I won. We'll be basically so, around no. the same time uh, this year and we're going to have more uh, multiple routes down. So it's going to be, it's going to be a tighter experience, top to bottom. You'll see when I get to the uh, section connecting these two pieces of track uh -huh. that uh, we've really put a lot of emphasis on the design in terms of keeping the gameplay flowing from uh, from top to bottom. And the world guys have really, you know, t took what we learned last year. We, we thought we did a good job, but uh, they've really taken that and, uh, and expanded that to be a, a great job this year in terms of providing the gameplay. And you can see the style, once again, translating into every level. We have the... Yeah, so we'll see the snow markings, you know, kind of a, a freaky kind of alien head with stars coming out of it, just a sure. kind of doodle art. And you'll see it on the turn markings, you know, just kind the, of hands drawn the, on there. The horns. Cool. Now, tell us about the, the trick system. That's yeah. been changed a little bit too, right? It has been changed a little bit. So, um, so what we've done is uh, we found that in the past, um, players were having some trouble um, basically initiating uber tricks um, uh, when they weren't expecting them. So what mm -hmm. we've done is we've moved the monster tricks down to the right analog now. All right. So as you see, my bar is filled. Now if I want to pull off one, uh, I'll wait for a jump here. But now if I want to pull one off, Basically, I'm, I'm moving my hand down, so it's a really conscious decision by the player to kind of make that move right. on, the, on the controller and pull that off. Um, so, you know, it allows for a lot more control for the player. Um, you know, the risk versus reward is all in the player's hand, as opposed to triggering something in the past that was, you know, it, you really never knew when you're going to trigger it. Right. So. Now the icon right there that's next to your meter. Yeah. Right, the crazy path thing on the a lot of the screenshots we've seen a skull. Is yep. that something that's customizable? It's going to be customizable. You so there's basically 10 different choices. Uh -huh. uh, as you create your character, you're going to choose uh, one of these icons, and it will become part of your HUD. And uh, you'll also see it throughout your career, a, a little later on in your career, in a, in a couple of different ways. So Cool. So yeah, very cool. And again, matching with the front end style. So And you won another race. So no, I'm actually oh, moving oh, through. Oh, so this is a dual track. So this me. is what I was talking about with the full streaming. So now we've that was got smooth. You know, seamless gameplay. Last year, really flat through these sections. Um, and the really cool thing about this, we've actually taken some of the best parts of SX Tricky and SX3 uh -huh. and put them in as these little uh, sections connecting the tracks. So. Oh, cool. Actually, yeah, this does look a little familiar. Yeah, yeah. 
So I've seen you earn some cash along the way. Yep. So uh, the shop returns. Yeah, the shop returns. You'll be basically buying some. Uh, you'll be buying equipment. Um, you'll be buying uh, your boards and skis. Uh, later on, mm -hmm. and you'll be buying clothing, so right. you can outfit your rider uh, throughout your career. Yeah, give Nate the cowboy hat and the yeah, yeah, and yeah, exactly, the exactly. So you're collecting cash. Uh, there's again boost on the track, so you get your speed boost up. We saw, I saw, I've seen a blur effect a couple times. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see if I can show you the sense of speed. So we really kind of amped up two things in the game, and that was the speed and the tricks, which is kind of the two most important things for for any SSX fan. So right. You can see. We're layered in visual effects, basically at different speed thresholds. There's an audio, um, there's an audio component to that as well, as well as feedback in the controller. So as you whip close to objects or people on the track, you'll get feedback in your controller. Now we just saw something break right there. Yep. Is there a lot you can wreck in this? Lots of breakables again this year. Um, again, we've tried to be conscious about which things you can break, um, so that players know, you know, what to smash through and what not to smash through. But uh, yeah, there's always been breakables in SSX, and uh, we'll continue to, to do them. So, is that a turbo right there? Yeah. So I filled up my boost bar that allows me to pull off a monster trick, which no, I've just nice. done. So. Gonna sail over the porch, and this is the end of your race. So, so now you won. So now I won. So that was kind of a dual track race, and then so I finished off at this point. Um, and so that's that's just round one. So there's a second round. So uh, you can see with the full mountain of these possibilities and the gameplay that goes top to bottom now, it's a lot more compelling than it was last year uh, in cool. terms of just keeping the game flowing and, and having a good time playing it. So now I asked you to pick the skis at the beginning. Yep. Is this, can you switch between the two? Once you start your career, uh -huh. uh, you're going to be either a skier or boarder, but you can always go back and play. So and play we expect again. your career mode to be anywhere, you know, close to about 15 hours of gameplay. So, uh, but you can go back and then take your border through the same experience. I'm going to um, have to, exactly. Yeah. And then, but or then simultaneously. Or simultaneous. Maybe. Yeah. If yeah. you want to do that. Um, but then of course in multiplayer, you and your buddy can switch freely between the two and right. compete. Um, the races themselves will feature both borders and skiers as you go through. Some will be, you know, one discipline or another, but... Uh, that was going to be my next question. Returning characters, since they are all snowboarders, will they just be snowboarders? Are we going to see some of that? They're, they've been, some of them have been mixed up, but they have, uh, they have designations, so they'll either be a border or a skier, so... Cool. Makes sense. And the rail slides are back. And rail slides are back. Lots of cool little lines to find in the world, as usual. You know, right. lots of uh, lots of different things. So out of, what, out of bounds was a big thing. Out of th out of bounds was a huge thing, and, and probably our biggest uh, our biggest consumer complaint. Um, really? Yeah, I think so. You know, there are a lot of people that uh, didn't really like it, and uh, so what you'll see is as I go down here, you'll notice that the sidewalls are all built up. We've really tried not to tempt the player to go anywhere they shouldn't go. Okay. Um, last year, we felt that we were a little too flat in the sections mm -hmm. and basically encouraged players to try and go there right. when, in fact, we didn't really have anything there and they'd basically go out of bounds. So we've really tried to uh, tried to address that problem. Great. Well, we have some questions coming, I do believe, from our audience. Sure. Are, yeah. you, are you prepared? Yeah, I'm ready. You sure? You, you can handle this? Yeah, yeah. So we've seen, you know, this is, again, we're still on the East Peak. Yeah, we're still. Uh, and you're flying right there. Yeah, oh, we're I like flying, the little hustle move right flying there. Flying down here, yeah. Cool. And here are our questions. You ready? Yep. I'm First ready. question from Alexander Knight in Van Nuys. Will the SSX characters from previous SSX games make a comeback? Yes, Alexander. Don't don't worry about that one. I'll take okay. care of that one yep. for you. Anders Peterson in Denmark. Why did you choose to add skis to the snowboards? Uh, it's a good question. I think we looked at it. Um, we've talked about it in the past, and, and we we considered it. But I think really. It came to that down to just giving the players more choice on how they play the game this year. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's a whole new way to play, a whole new set of tricks to master. So for returning fans, it's something new for them. You know, it, you pick it up and play it, and it's been incredible the feedback. Just you know, picking it up and having fun, and it's something new. And most members of the dev team, in fact, are playing skiers versus boarders. You know, nice. uh, nowadays. So it was really player choice and just offering uh, the players another way to play through the game. Makes sense. We'll put you on the spot right here, Joe from Ohio. How come no online modes? How come no online modes? Yeah. So basically, what we decided was, uh, in order to really blow out our career mode and really focus down on our on our cool creative character feature, we really need to concentrate on that. So, as much as it hurt us not to provide online, we really wanted to make sure that we had the depth and, and the accessibility through our career mode first before we kind of took it to the online. Makes sense. All right, dude. We have a long question here from Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. All right. Oh, you, snow up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to butcher how to pronounce their, their hometown, but uh, we've had, what's that? It's, Re it's Reykjavik, Reykjavik, but I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. There you yeah. just made me do it. But. All right, uh, he wants to know, 
how many characters in the game and how you split the game between skiing and snowboarding. We've kind of covered that. There's yeah, 10. There's going to be 10 characters. But limitless, but, if you include the creative player, could you say? Yeah, limitless, really, because uh, any combination of things that you want to do for yourself, oh, uh, nice. you can do. So, yeah, I just finished off that race. Congratulations. I finished that. Um, yeah, so there's 10 IPs, but you're really creating your own personality and bringing it into the game. So. Nice. Question from New Orleans. New Orleans. Yep. SSX is known for its awesome music. What new things have you added to make it even more awesome? Yeah, so I think a couple things. So we've changed our direction, as I was saying. We're going a bit more rock-focused, so you'll feel that right away within the game. Uh, the hip-hop is a new addition. We really kind of amped those up. But not only that, but with the sense of speed and the monster moments within the game, we've got new kind of treatments with music ducking away, coming down, and going back up. So it's really, again, it's a really kind of dynamic experience with the music in the game this can, year. Can you, give it, can you give us names yet? Or? Uh, we're really, you know, I can, I can call out a couple, you know, uh, LCD, uh, Sound System, Louis XIV, The Hives, nice. uh, Perceptionist. So those That's are, a lot of stuff. That's those great. are the few of the ones we're, we've cool. got right now. So the rest, we're still, you know, we're still in the middle of so, negotiating and whatnot. So the music, so. if we hear, can we also, can we just take for granted that if we hear a song in the trailer, it's going to be in the game? Yes, we get, you can. Uh, yes. That's so if you hear it in the trailer, it's going to be in the game. So. Great. All right, we're going to have one last question then. This is from Brett Parsons in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Are there any new weather effects featured in the game this year? Uh, I wouldn't say per se there's any new weather effects, it's but it's like, really yeah. how we've tried to, um, you know, the tough thing with weather is, as cool as it is, you really want the player to keep playing and have right. a good time, and the more weather we threw on last year, we found, uh, it, obviously the gameplay suffers, so it's kind of a fine line, so it's really a balance between adding the various weather components, which we'll do, and, and by doing that, there might be new weather, but it's really the fine line, but try not to add too much to the game, actually. And it's not really too many, there aren't many types of weather. No, I mean, it's snow, it's, fog, it's rain, exactly. sleet, yeah. right? It's all the same We're going to melt it all. It'll be a grass track. Yeah, and you can go down there and mountain Unfortunately, bike. adding rain on top of snow makes everything slow, so I'm not sure the players would really right. want to. Unless it freezes, really, and then everything's too fast. And then you got the things that are too fast. Yeah. So we got lots of ice already, so. Yeah. Is there anything else in the game you want to talk about or show? No, I think uh, you know we're really excited and, and really hope that everyone enjoys the career mode and, and it really does offer the player the uh, the purpose that we've kind of been lacking for the last little while and and uh, bringing your creative character in uh, your own personality into the game for the first time. So. And we can find this game on store shelves at the end of October. We'll be out. Okay, thanks so much, Steve. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. And it's on PlayStation or Xbox. PS2, Xbox, GameCube, GameCube, and PSP. Oh, really? That's right, the PSP version. PSP version. And we have information yeah. for that on the site right now. We had an exclusive preview. Yep. Thanks yep. about that. Yeah, no problem. And uh, the coverage of, of EA's Gamers Day continues right now. There are over 20 games on hand here. Did you know that? I did. There I are did. over There's 20 games on hand. We've seen four of them. And uh, one that we're not going to have a live demo, but we do have an interview for, is uh, Tiger Woods 06. Check it out. I'm John Hayase. I'm the executive producer on Tiger Woods PJ Tour Golf 06. So this year we're showcasing uh, our Rivals mode, which is a new single player experience. You're going to be uh, battling with Tiger to attain and defend the number one uh, ranking of all time. So you're actually going to be uh, competing against Tiger through five eras of golf all the way back to the late 1800s uh, to current time. It's no longer a simple challenge tree. It's going to be more of a, a, a level-based experience where you're going to be uh, basically traveling through different eras. You're going to be battling against uh, different people and really a return to competition this year after a couple of years of uh, focusing on customization with Game Face and Tiger Proofing, which are both back. Uh, but this year we really wanted to focus on rivalries and competition and, and, and the feeling of, of battling head to head with Tiger. So new for this year is dual stick analog putting. It's a complete overhaul of our putting system. You know, in the past people have told us that it's been overly simplistic. This year, uh, simple things that we've had in the past like Tiger Vision, Caddy Tips, they're gone. Uh, we've completely overhauled the way you approach putting in our game. It feels a lot closer to our full swing. Uh, where you actually read your situation, you line up your shot, and then you have to execute. So we've got a better green grid. Uh, we've got, uh, we've still got the aiming marker, but this year we've we've upgraded our swing to a fully analog swing, si uh, similar to our full swing. We're uh, we've been working on a, a Tiger 06 version of PSP. We're very excited that it's going to be coming out the same time the console is. Uh, they share a lot of the same features. We've dramatically improved the load times, uh, which I think is going to be very well received. Uh, we've implemented our analog putting scheme, so that's exciting as well. 
And uh, we've got a great new lineup of courses and golfers uh, that are coming into the game that I think will deliver a console quality experience once again. And we're back. There's a look at Tiger Woods. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be really really cool. Uh, joining me on set right now is uh, my good friend. How are you doing? Why don't you go ahead and tell the folks who you are and what you do. How are you doing? My name's Danny Eub, and I'm the producer on Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. Now, Marvel ne Nemesis, I I've been a huge fighting game fan, like most people, like my whole life. And right when on. I first heard about this, I was super intrigued. But now actually seeing it in front of me, I can't wait to try it. I think we're going to get some action on today, right? Well, you know, uh, before the show, you, you threw down. <laughs> okay, I mean, there's really no other way to say it. So I, I think we gotta, we got to go in there and settle up a little bit. Excellent. And like, just take care of a little business before we jump into this. <laughs> if you're wondering, if you can hear the, the sounds behind us and around us, uh, the Gamers Day is, is happening and there's all kinds of stuff moving in and out. So that's what you hear in the background, just in case you were wondering. But uh, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what you got. Sure thing. Well, we'll hop on into uh, Versus Mode, which is our classic fighting mode. You choose a guy, I choose a guy, and we hop in. Uh, what we're We've got a limited roster today. We're rolling them out a bit at the time. But what, who we are unveiling today is Venom, who uh, just today to go in. Really popular character. Uh, there he is. Lots of fun. Uh, actually, I'll give... Uh, I'll give Venom a try. I'll give Wolverine a shot. All right. So just A your way through. Ooh. So yeah, we've got our altered characters going at the same time. So one of the cool things about the game is uh, we do have a universal control system. So what that means, we've gotten away from the memorization of your classic fighting game where it's up, down, left, right, now, and where you beat me because you've memorized three more moves than I have or something like that. So talking to people, uh, we heard two things. One was that it's a barrier to entry for people who've never played before. And two, that people get frustrated because they lose because somebody maybe knows a couple more moves than they do or something like that. If we've got a global control system I'll walk through with you really, really quickly. Okay. And uh, these are cinematics are in progress. And then we'll jump right in and we'll just see how it all kind of comes together. Now, as we do that, or, you know, we're going to talk about the controls right now. So you see, we moved away from a 2D locked to kind of get like a 3D environment. The environments are fully destructible and interactive. Got your basic jump button, which is your A right now. X for your simple strike. Uh, y is a block, as I just did there. And if you hold Y and move the trigger around, you'll dodge. Gotcha. Uh, B is grab, so pick up and throw. And that also applies to picking up objects and hucking them as well. <laughs> now, the, the cool part of the game really got... Marvel, you know, it's a Marvel fighting game. It's all about the powers. And, you know, unfortunately, they haven't really come to life. So we worked really hard to make sure the powers came to life. Where it all ties in, right and left trigger. So right trigger brings you into superpower mode. So in the case of Wolverine, he pops his claws out. Venom will go into superpower mode as well. Right, tr uh, the left trigger, pardon me, is mobility. So in the case of Wolverine, he'll do wall running. Venom will start swinging around using his webs, things like that. And if you jump, then hit it, you'll actually start swinging. So maybe we can just start mixing it up and uh, we can just kind of see how it kind of all comes together. Sounds good. Now, what are you guys showing today is, is you're actually not showing everything that you have going so far, right? Right. We're, we're rolling out um, a bit. There's a lot going on today. While we're here, we're also at Comic-Con at the, the big comic convention in San Diego. So we're rolling out uh, some new characters. So uh, Venom, again, being one of them that we're really excited about. Nice. We're also um, showing off single player mode, which is brand new for a fighting game. We wanted to get away from the classic single player experience where it was virtually the same as a versus mode with some cinematics slopped on. So we've got a very different kind of um, single player mode that actually is similar to a relay race that takes players through a story mode where they'll get to experience all of their characters. It also functions as a bit of a Oh, that was <laughs> <laughs> as a bit of a training mode at the same time, right? So you can kind of learn how your characters work and then move into the actual uh, game against an opponent or against the computer. So some of the things that jump out, we obviously went for a, uh, a darker look. We wanted to get away from the cartooniness of your classic superhero game and do what the films have done, right? So if you look at like the X-Men or uh, the Spider-Man movies, they've really done a great job of bringing the characters into the 21st century. Nice save. So you can kind of save yourself too using your powers. Um, bring it into the 21st century, make things a lot darker uh, and more contemporary, really. So the, the other cool part about it that we're, we're talking a bit more about today is the Imperfects. So these are characters we've talked a lot about. We've been really excited about them because we've done them jointly in, a, in collaboration with Marvel. And uh, we're rolling some of the, those guys out today. What was really cool about it, and we're actually at liberty to talk about now, is um, the fans out there will know this one. We're working with a guy named Mark Millar. Mm -hmm. 
for the characters. He helped us create the new superheroes. He also worked with us on the overlying story as well. So it all kind of falls together through Mark. Mark's just a brilliant guy. He's got some phenomenal ideas, and it was really, I mean, just a lot of fun working with him. Now, how, how long has that collaboration been going on for? Pretty much since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, Mark has a, a lot of really cool ideas, and uh, he's really helped us get our heads around, around the universe, helping us create new characters. Because, you know, everyone kind of has their favorite superheroes and things like that, and everyone always talks, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this, wouldn't it be cool if that? Right. But bringing them to life is actually quite complicated. So <laughs> having a vet like uh, Mark help us out was just fantastic. Now, I guess we should probably skip skip on and sure. see some other characters and some other stuff. Now, you were talking about a specific mode that was actually unveiled for the first time today, is that correct? Yeah, so we can show that off if you want to quit and sure. uh, go back to the main menu. Okay. Uh, we've got a single player mode. So this is, this is going to be your basic fighting mode, as I was saying. Single player mode follows uh, more of the story, and the story is about a guy named Van Rokel who is assaulting New York City. Like, the whole city's under attack. And the single player mode kind of puts you in the POV of different characters as this invasion is going on. So it's something to kind of mix it up a little bit. It gets you away from the classic kind of fighting of a versus mode. It's also kind of a fancy training mode. So what we'll do as you go through it, we're going to teach you everything you're going to need to fight in the versus mode. So as you can see, like here, we're teaching you how to block and dodge and, uh, and stuff like that. So this mode on its own will probably run about seven to nine hours, depending on the skill of the player. And as you can see, these are new venues that aren't in the, uh, aren't in the versus mode. These are new characters. You're basically fighting his invading force off right now. What I'm playing here is a pretty early mission um, that would be, you know, pretty early on into the game, teaching a character how to use uh, Wolverine in this case. And you can pull any character you want into this part. So you, you kind of move through. The story starts actually with Thing being uh, on a bridge when it's under attack. So he's, and I've gone into rage mode now. Um, when it's under attack and he starts playing and then it kind of kicks the story over to Wolverine. So you can kind of swap POVs throughout the course of the game. Um, you do have some options in terms of uh, what order you complete your missions in. You can keep four guys on your team at any one time. Uh, after that you do have to give somebody up and uh, swap it out. So that way you're not going to see the entire story just by uh, playing through once. And there's a lot of collectibles and things like that as well that you're also going to want to keep playing through in order to get those. We've got cards, we've got digital comics, uh, things like that. So we really wanted to tap into the uh, collecting nature of the, uh, of the industry as well and really pay off on that for, you know, your, your big time Marvel fan. And it seems like you guys got a whole bunch of stuff. Is this showing you that now you can go ahead and go through that particular area and move on to the next section? Yeah, so in this case, what's going to come up is it's teaching me how to wall run, right? So for a lot of characters in versus mode, this is going to be critical because mobility plays a big part. So it's teaching me how to wall run over, the, over that hazard, and I'm going to get attacked again by some of these guys. Some cool things to note, obviously, as you can see, as I get close to the fire, uh, the characters are lit by it. So we've got some really cool lighting effects. Um, the characters just look phenomenal. We've been hearing some great things, especially about Venom, as we've been showing him. Because, I mean, Venom's just such a badass character, right? <laughs> I, I, everyone loves Venom. Everybody loves Venom. And people are just going on saying, like, how gr great he looks, right? Which was really great for us, because Venom's a big favorite of the game team. And we're getting comment comments like, wow, Venom's never looked this good and <laughs> stuff like that. So, I mean, that, that's just really rewarding for us as well. Excellent. So what this will let you do, and that, that just winds that up, this will kind of let you learn the characters in a different setting and warm you up for versus mode as well and also let's you know give it a give you a break right if you kind of want a different kind of gameplay take you can play this and try it out i got some uh some questions here if you wouldn't mind taking from our audience oh i'd love to fantastic uh alexander in van nuys california wants to know can the whole environment be destructible um the environments that's a great question are a big part of superhero fiction right as i said we really wanted to bring these characters to life as much as we could destructibility was a big part of it so everything in the environment can be uh, we, we did a small touch up there but can be picked up can be thrown can be smashed because what's really cool if you know you want to feel like a superhero and that's about picking a bus up over your head and hucking it and stuff like that characters can interact with everything within the limits of their fiction so wolverine can't pick up a bus but iron man can for example sweet now, we're looking at this title screen before we jump back into versus mode and I get a rematch. <laughs> and uh, I can see a couple of things on here, Xbox Live being one of them and rewards being the other. Can you talk a little bit about the online plans you guys have and yeah. what that rewards is about? Yeah, you bet. So for the live portion, we are going to be online for PS2 and Xbox. So, you know, you'll be able to find, find opponents. Oops, we went into... Uh, oh, sorry. You'll be able to find opponents from pretty much all over the place and match up with them. 
Rewards, uh, I touched on it a little bit. We really wanted to touch into the, the collector's nature of comic book fans. So as you go through, you're going to unlock characters. You're going to unlock venues that will affect, uh, so we can just quit out of here, that will directly affect gameplay. But what you're also going to unlock are collectible cards, moments from the game that we've kind of gone in and made really nice, uh, that will give some bios, backgrounds as well to the different characters. We've also got something um, really cool, which is um, comics. So we've gone in there, and rather than just have a comic cover or something, which is kind of, you know, kind of lame, or just yeah. like these static images on a TV screen, we've actually gone in and animated comics. So they're actual real comics that we've moved screen around and put sound effects, voice effects to, and it actually really comes to life. So as you go through, you'll unlock chapters of it, and you can kind of put the whole thing together and build your own comic collection as well. <laughs> That's totally cool. Which is, yeah, it's kind of neat. Uh, from CM in G. Berg, Maryland, he wants to know, I'm a huge fan of the whole Marvel universe. I know Spidey, Excellent. Iron Man, and my favorite Mr. Logan will be in the game, but I haven't heard about any other heroes or villains, or even if there will be playable villains. Give me the inside scoop. What's the roster looking like, and how much different will it be between my PS2 and PSP? Because my PSP is getting fighting game lonely. All right. Well, you know, we're <laughs> going to take care of you on this one. So, what we do, some uh, to answer one of your questions, we've got Venom in there right now. So that's you know that's a new villain. We're unveiling the roster a bit at a time. Some other characters that uh, here I'll grab. Uh, I'll give Solara a shot. Some other characters that we're talking about uh, as well. Obviously, I mentioned Thing. Uh, Human Torch is also going to be in the game. Uh, it's not on this particular build, but we are going to. You will be able to play as a villain if you like as well and there will be villains featured in the game for the PSP side uh, we, we don't want people's PSPs to be lonely so we have actually uh, we've changed things up a little bit the PC uh, the PSP version will have uh, characters that aren't in the console version and it'll also have venues that aren't in the console version so that means you're going to be able to go in there and have a different fighting experience on your PSP versus your PS2 or something like that uh, Bryce Gilbert from Monroe Washington wants to know are there going to be any unlockable costumes in the game like a yellow Wolverine perhaps? Well, what we're showing today, and, and you kind of saw it while you were zipping in there, we do have alternate costumes that are tied into the story of the game. Uh, you saw kind of the circuitry running over them. This is kind of when the characters are possessed by this alien technology. Uh, that's all we're talking about at this point, unfortunately. But uh, they're, they're definitely going to be alternate costumes. Uh, Lee Williams out of New York is going to have to wait for his question because I'm going to take control of Spider-Man and see what I can do. So I'm using Fault Zone, one of the new IP characters. Uh, she's quite, uh, her, quite spry, and her ability is to create localized shockwaves, as you can see. So she can, she's a tiny little character, but she can definitely uh, create a lot of damage. And we're fighting on top of here the, the Daily, Daily Bugle. You only have two levels that you're showing here today, is that right? That's right. So today we're showing, uh, we've got the Daily Bugle that we're showing. We've also got the Avengers Mansion. So we wanted to, uh, you know, we wanted some Marvel-specific levels that uh, the fans could kind of relate to, that, tie, you know, kind of put you into the fiction. And uh, these are just a couple of them. We're definitely going to have more that we're going to be rolling out um, as we go. Oh, wow, that worked out pretty good for me, huh? So you can bat objects, like you can swat them instead of just picking them up, right? So from a gameplay perspective, that's faster, uh, but it's a little less accurate. Right on. I got one more question coming your way, and then I think we're going to go take a look at some Need for Speed action. All right. Uh, this one comes in from, and I'll let you beat up on me while I look up. Uh, no, no. We'll, we'll, fi <laughs> we'll finish this off camera. Uh, King said, <laughs> King said, British Columbia wants to know, how many playable and unlockable characters will there be? Can you actually say what the, the final roster totals will be? Uh, no, unfortunately, I can't talk too much about the roster right now. All I can say is that, you know, stay tuned, and we're definitely going to be rolling more characters out as we get closer to ship. Um, Leo Williams in New York wants to know, from Marvel Nemesis, are there multiple levels in each stage? Can you knock someone off a rooftop and start fighting on the street? Our levels are uh, work more from a destructibility standpoint. So what you can do, your, your level will alter as you play in it because things are going to start collapsing and blowing up and things like that. So we focused on the destructibility rather than put you in a canned cinematic that kind of moves you somewhere else. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and hey, showing us. Really my pleasure. It. We're coming out end of September, and uh, check us out. We're really excited. And, and just so the folks at, no, at home know for sure, all the platforms that you're going to be on with this? Yeah, we're going to be on uh, Xbox, PS2, GameCube, PSP, and also NDS as well. So uh, there's going to be plenty of superheroes for everybody. <laughs> Well, right on. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some Need for Speed action. Uh, we got a little something in the can. We're going to take a look at that, and then once we come back, me and Rich are going to send it off. And I think we got some prizes to give away, so uh, stick around. Hi, this is Katrina Strafford with Electronic Arts. We're here in 
Sonoma, California at the Need for Speed Formula D Drift Series, and we're here with the Need for Speed Most Wanted Blacklist Tournament. The tournament features over it features a hundred competitors. It was a head-to-head -head single elimination competition in which we walked away with one guy with a trip or two to the Need for Speed launch event and a drift along with the guys on the track. Underground, and again, yes, your favorite street racing is back. But now we have the addition of Smart Pop, and unlike any of the underground games, now you can race with either your tuner car or up to the exotics and go head to head to see who's the best. Oh, that's a Roger. Go ahead. And we're back, Ryan. Yes, sir. Longest show ever, but a ton of great games. I think, I think it was, yeah. I think we got a lot of stuff on there. You know, I was I, I was dreaming, thinking this would be a shorter show, but I, I put the math to it. It was like at E3, we did about three demos an hour, right? That's about right. We yeah. had five demos today. We're right on time. <laughs> that's perfect. That's, that, well, yeah, that's that the way to do it. That's great. We have, by the way, we saw a bunch of great games. Now we have a ton of great loot to give away. Oh, do we really? We have. We here. Well, I had to write it down. There's so, That's much, so much, stuff. much loot. But first, before that, last week we had some great loot we gave away too. This is UMD movies. We had five packages of five movies, UMD movies, courtesy of Fox Home Entertainment. Some great stuff in there. Predator. Predator was in there. Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite was in there. Super Troopers was in there. My favorite. What are they two? I Robot and uh, Dodgeball. Yes, sir. That's a great. And we have five people that won. Oh, can you, can you tell was, me who they are? Yeah, it was a Super Troopers themed question. We asked what was the uh, Canadian delicacy. It's actually a French Canadian delicacy that it's uh, French fries with gravy and cheese curds. And what is it? It's poutine. Oh, is that what it's called? It's poutine. And in the first scene of Super Troopers, when the kids get pulled over, and they say they're going to Canada for some poutine. So, French fries and gravy. <laughs> anyway, so five people got it right. Who are they? Surprisingly enough, a lot of them are from the Northeast oh, or really? from or from Canada. We got Jill George of New Hampshire. Congratulations, Carl Dumont of Quebec. Tim Taverner of the UK. You say that's the UK. That's not Canada. He's from Canada. Oh wow! He said that. Um, Greg Koshman of Ontario. And the last guy. I don't know if you remember. We autographed a copy of Super Troopers to send off. Yeah. You might remember back at E3, there was a certain young man who we gave away those two great Nintendo DS cards <laughs> with the Zelda trailer. Don't even tell me. And his 21 Bs and this certain guy. Oh, that guy. He sent one. As an answer, he sent two. He sent three. He sent four. He sent five. He sent all the way up to 20, but stopped before the answer of 21. Missed out. His name, Thomas Martinez of California, and he was the fifth winner of the UMD package. Excellent. So you got some. Yeah, He's coming around. He was quick. He, he knew the right answer. It, for knowing your French Canadian delicacies, congratulations. Excellent. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. We're going to give away some, some more loot, though. Even more? Yeah, hold up these t shirts okay. right here. The side is, like, is the key on this. These are SSX on tour t shirts. We have three of them. This is the side. See the side? It has the crazy style. I gotcha. They're uh, extra large, or as Tim Tracy would say, gamer size medium. Excellent. But uh, So we're going to give away three of those. And as you know, we're about to throw a bunch of prizes at you. GameSpot complete members using the form at the bottom of the page. We need, what do we need, Ryan? We need their full name and address so we can give them the stuff. Plus, uh, we need them to be some of the first people to send in the answers right. Exactly. And, and we're going to give away some games. Yes, sir. So we need to know what platform you want the game on. Oh, that's a good thing to that's know. That's good. So first, let's, do, let's give away the t-shirts. Okay. And uh, SSX on tour. I did a demo. I'm going to say, easy question, toss right out there, first three people get this right. What is the uh, major new form of gameplay, new to the SSX franchise, that you can find in SSX on tour? I know. It's a pretty easy <laughs> one. First three people that want themselves t-shirts. Sweet. All right, your turn. All right. All right, here's what we're going to do for this one. Okay. We're going to give away five copies of Marvel Nemesis. Oh, wow. But it's not out yet. That's right. So the five people that win it are going to win themselves demos. 
in the meantime. In the meantime. In the meantime. And then when the, the final and game when comes? when the final game comes out, we'll, give them, we'll send them the game. That's awful. Nice. All right, so I want a trivia question right now, Marvel Nemesis. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, of the characters that you saw today, who, uh, who's playable? Who's playable? Who's playable? Who are the three definite playable characters? All right, we'll make it easy for everybody. Okay. If you can tell me, in Marvel Nemesis, what you just saw demoed, uh, what are three playable characters that are featured in the demo that you saw today? From the Marvel Universe or just uh, no, in general? No, three or? playable characters in the game that you saw today. All right, cool. That's, so, good. that's, that's a good so question. How many copies you got in that? And what do you we got? got five. You got five? First five people. First five people. Yeah. That's a lot of business. All right, I want you to give me another trivia question. All right. All right. Put, you're putting me on the spot now. All right, oh, on the spot going. All right, from Russia with Love. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to give away three copies of the game. Three copies. For each platform. Oh, whoa. So that's we're giving away nine copies <laughs> of From Russia with Love. Give me, give me, uh, give me one trivia question. First nine people we want to, you know, pick a platform. Uh, can I, can I go ahead and make it about the demo we had today? Yeah. Fantastic. What was the? Uh, there was a very specific stealth style demo that we gave today, and there was a very specific level that has a certain name that the guy kept on referring to it as. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can give me that name, that would be who I would give those. Can you say that to. question again. Just yeah, yeah, sure. So there's two demo. There's two two actual levels that we demoed today. Right. Uh, one was a car level. Right. It was pretty straightforward car level. It's a car level. And there was another level that was a. Something. Oh, okay. What kind, so, what, kind what, kind of, what kind of level? Actually, I'll, I'll ask. What kind of shrubbery was featured? That's what I'm really asking. <laughs> really? Yeah. Totally. I, I can't believe I missed that demo. That sounds great. All right. I'm going to give away uh, three copies of Burnout Revenge when that comes out. Times two. When does that come out? Do you know? It comes out in the fall, right. like every other game. Excellent. It's coming out in the fall soon enough. We, this, the way it will be over. You, you and Alex Ward, by the way, you look like I had a whole bunch of fun over here. Dude, this game was so good. It, it, I, you guys look like you're having a blast. We, ha we, were, we were having a blast, and I've got to tell you, I want the show over so I can go see the other game that Criterion's working on. I don't say the name. Okay. So that's my trivia question. <laughs> oh, that's For good... six people to tell us what the other highly anticipated game from Criterion. One best PlayStation 2 game for a game spot at E3 2005, Editor's Choice Award. Now, can I, can I come with you and see this game? Yeah. All right. Cool. We're going. Excellent. Once you give us a uh, trivia question to give away three times three copies of Madden. Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, go ahead and tell me. This is the fun thing. It's like when we come to do this stuff, we don't yeah. always just... I mean, like, there's a ton of people over here. You got Tyler. You got a bunch of people filming developer interviews. Mm -hmm. You got people over here writing stories. You got all kinds of stuff happening. And the cool thing that we did earlier that I had a blast doing was I got to talk to Jeremy Strauser, who's been a long time Madden producer, uh -huh. and talk to him about the history of Madden. Oh, cool. So I'll ask a real easy one out there. Sure. What was the first year that Madden actually came out? Ooh. That's a good one, right? Yeah, that is a good one. Oh, cool. what, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll find out. That's All a great right. show. That was a good show. You want to give us a prediction for the fight that's over your shoulder right now? Oh, is, is Bernard Hopkins hanging yeah, out over my see shoulder? You, you I want to see. To Ryan I want to see a shot of. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah the Bernard Hopkins. Right there. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, this is gonna be awesome <laughs> this weekend. I'm uh, super excited of it. Big fan of the, of the sports <laughs> games. So, uh, so yeah, Bernard Hopkins. I, my prediction. Yeah, that was your asking, right? Yeah. Uh, it could go either way. Bernard's got. The, he's, a, he's the veteran. He's got. All right. Bernard Hopkins. Right, I'll go with the young guy. I don't even know his name. Jermaine Taylor. All right, Jermaine Taylor, Jermaine Taylor. Business, yeah. He's better than that commercial that keeps playing. Well, but this is a great show. This was a fun show. I, I want to thank the fine people at EA for having us. They've been so hospitable. They've been great. We're going we're gonna to hang out for a little more just because we've been working on this show for so long. We want to go around and see all the games. We can hang out before we have to pack everything up? Yeah, sweet. Oh, well, sure. I'm so happy to yeah, hear sure. that. Well, thank you for watching. This has been a lengthy show. We appreciate you sticking around. It, we saw some great games here. Look for previews of every game here. If they're not on the site yet, they'll be on the site sh soon. And standalone developer interviews. Standalone developer gameplay interviews, movies. gameplay movies. There's already a bunch on there. We're going to have the direct feed from this show. will be a standalone gameplay movies for you to see, including the SSX on tour intro movie. Nice. Which I got, we couldn't show on the show, but we'll, we'll be on the site soon enough. If not today, then tomorrow. I think there was some stuff from Russell with Love that we got that we didn't get a chance to get on the, the live show. And so. we'll get that on there too. Excellent. Are we, are we, should we tease them about what we got next? We got a great show next week. We too. do have a great show next week. Dude, we got so much. Stuff. I'm going to teach people maybe about how to install a PSP in your car. And we're gonna and we're gonna play We Heart Katamari Katamari Damacy. We love Katamari Damacy. We're gonna play it. That's awesome. We have the Japanese version in. It's out in Japan. Of the, uh, Katamari Two is out. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, in Japan. I don't it's know. coming. So there's, there's two things that are big, and there's another super big thing that's happening. Wait, can we say it? I, I don't even know if we can actually can say, we say this. Can, can we say what? We're, no, no, we can't. All right, we'll just, just come, come back. back next week. It'll be great. Yeah, also, uh, <laughs> <laughs> also in uh, email us. We didn't give away any copies of SSX on tour. We're we're gonna be hanging out there soon. So I hear. Yeah, Canada. We're gonna go up there. We're gonna. And, and that's one thing I'd also like to to add. You know, it's yeah. like. It, we, we hang out at a lot of different places, so if you're a developer out there and you're watching and you want us to come hang out and check out your games, give That's us a call. Yeah, sure. You know, you know how to awesome. get a hold of us, right? I don't. Oh, really? Yeah. My number's unlisted. So, all right. That's cool. You should send us home. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of here. Thank everyone for sticking around. It's been a great show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week back home 
on the spot.